And now, the next case. All parties in the matter, Woods versus Woods. Step forward. Latosh Woods is suing her cousin, Sean Woods, for unpaid tickets and damages to her car. Ms. Woods, there are two parts of your complaint. They both emanate from you loaning your car to your cousin and him acquiring during the course of him having the car a series of tickets and also you ascribe to him damage to the car that occurred a couple of days after you got the car back the bumper or something fell off the car and you believe that that was caused by something that happened while the car was in his custody. Mr. Wood says you were going out of town for a period of four or five weeks to care for a relative. You asked him if he would like to move the car for you because there's alternate side of the street parking during street cleaning. He said he would move the car for you. He probably did in fact take it out when he needed it. Is that right, sir? Of course but that the tickets that you got on the car were for a problem that you had with the car. You had no front license plate on the car, and that's not his fault, and that he never caused any damage to the car. He doesn't know what you're talking about with regard to your bumper. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Latosh Wood says her cousin, Sean Woods, owes for tickets he received while driving her car. He caused damage to the vehicle. Now, you live in the state of California? I do. Does the state of California require that you have a license plate on the front and the back of your car? I believe so. I'm not sure. When you loaned the car to your cousin, have a front license plate on the car? I have. A That's either your yes, yes or a no. You did? Yes. What were the tickets that were received while the car was in Mr. Wood's possession? What were they for? For parking in the alley, for... Just a second. Parking in an alley. That was the first one. I'd like to see it. Thank you. Parking in alley. What alley did you park the car in? I don't know. Well, then that's your ticket, $144. Okay. Very good. What's the next ticket that you got? So far, this has nothing to do with lack of a front license plate. The no stopping and standing and also display of plates. Well, let me see, because display of plates is your problem. No stopping, no standing. She wasn't stopping or standing, you were stopping or standing. I was stopped. So why didn't you pay the ticket? Well, that's just one of the tickets that I did not pay yet. I oh, paid. Oh, well, here are two tickets you didn't pay. Here's another one for 201. And I'm not charging you, sir, for the 76 for display of plates. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> What's next? Parked on the sidewalk. I'd like to see that one. That's an interesting one. Parked on the sidewalk. These are all the tickets. Oh, there's more. I got like 11 tickets. Let's go. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thanks, bro. This is parked on the sidewalk, sir. Why were you parked on the sidewalk? I wasn't parked on the sidewalk. <laughs> July 1st, mm -hmm. 2 19 a.m. I was parked, and it was about maybe two or three inches on the line for the sidewalk, so they gave me the ticket. Well, who should pay for that? No one. Well, then what you have to do, sir, is you have to go and fight it. But sure. not just not pay it, but right now it's beyond fighting. Right now it's a year later. Okay. What do you mean, okay? Okay. I mean, why do you come here if you really have no legitimate defense? Okay. And you just say, well, you know, I have nothing else to do. Do you work? Yes. Doing what? Uh, limos. I work with limos. You work with cars? Correct. Work with cars. Ironic, right? <laughs> Standing in the alley, that would be him, $63. Then this cop really didn't like you because he gave you another ticket on the same day for display of plates. I've never received tickets for display of plates. Ever. Well, you got them now. I was not here. <laughs> oh, no, they're your display of plates. If you didn't have a plate on the front of your car, that's your problem. I do have problem. a plate. Then why would a police officer, if you had plates on the car, give you tickets? Because my car was being parked all nilly-willy, and if you're going to issue tickets, I'm gonna, they're going to issue tickets for everything they can. Well, that's right, but they couldn't issue a ticket if you had a front plate on your car. No, it's right here, see? The front plate. It's displayed. It was knocked off because someone parked so close to my car that they knocked my plate off. But it is displayed. Just a second. Before or after he had it? It was before he had the vehicle, yes. That's right. But well, it was also, I've never listen, received tickets. Then, then you can go and you can contest display of plates. But you're supposed to have the plate displayed on the front of the car. So he's not responsible for the display of plates. That's your problem. So I, I see. 
I was just throwing them out the window. Then you go and argue the ticket. How do I argue the ticket? Like you're arguing with me now. And say to the judge who's hearing your case, my car had a plate displayed. It was in the front window at the time. It just wasn't on the car. And if the judge, don't just ignore it. Go and tell it to the judge. Not to me. I'm not the parking violations judge. Here's another one, sir. You like to stay in alleys. What do you do in alleys? <laughs> Standing in an alley. It's just the way the parking is in that area. No, no, no. I want to know. Heard. Did you ever get a ticket for standing in an alley? No, just standing in an alley. I mean, I've gotten a ticket for, you know, overdue meter. I have gotten one of those, you know. But I don't remember ever a, anybody in my family, certainly not myself, getting a ticket for standing in an alley. Mr. Woods seemed to have a pension for yeah. getting tickets for standing in alleys. Must be a California thing. Must be. <laughs> Whose tickets are they? Hers. Yours. You're standing. You're on the sidewalk. This has nothing to do with no front plate. Okay. There's nothing here that says license plate on it. You trust me on that, don't you, Mr. Woods? I definitely do. Seven nineteen. What else do you want from him, Miss Woods? Okay. After I received my car back from him on the twenty seventh, as I was driving on the freeway, my grill flew up, scratched my hood, and hit the uh, windshield. Well, that's not Mr. No. Woods' fault. Things didn't just fly off my car when I had Well, Miss Woods, you told me about five minutes ago that the reason your front plate wasn't on the car is because someone had backed into the front of your car mm -hmm. and knocked the license plate off, which is why you put it inside the car. Correct. You just told me that. Yes, I did. Well, how are you going to explain that to me when you want to ascribe any damage that happened that you don't know? He denies he was in any sort of an accident. I mean, he denies sure. he was even parking my car, but the fact of the matter is he was driving my car for I five weeks. I the car. I get it back and stuff is flying off. I know what happened to my license plate. It was two days after I purchased my vehicle that someone parked so close to my car and knocked it off. So I've had my license plate displayed in my window for five years. Never oh, yeah. one ticket. You're very, but very lucky lady. I know. It's my responsibility You're to take care of the license plate. You're a very lucky lady. He owes you $719 for his parking tickets. It. Well, can I? That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't say anything. Oh, it's so huge. You may step out. My cousin knew about the tickets. The fact that it was such a close family member. I called her while she was gone. One I trusted to use my vehicle. I told her I'd take care of the tickets when I could take care of them. And for them to turn around and do this, yeah. She chose not to have any communication with me. Next thing I know, I'm here. I have no relationship with him anymore. At that point in time, that was it. Lesson learned. Ladies, have a seat, please. Miss Ragsdale, the defendant was your boyfriend for a while. You lived together for how long? For approximately 10 months. And you moved into his home? Correct. You moved into his home alone? Yes. So it was just the two of you? No, his uh, mother lived upstairs, and Jeff and I stayed downstairs. Is that your home or your mother's home? It's my home. And you own it? Yes. Okay. It's your claim that he owes you for lots of things. First, that you paid rent to him each month that you were there, and that when you left as a result of what you allege is an act of domestic violence, it was in the middle of the month you want half your rent back. That's one. Then you want compensation for the assault that you alleged that took place, which resulted in your leaving the home. Correct. And then you want some medical bills? Yes. Okay. Let's deal first with the rent. The last month that you lived there was what month? Um, the last full month was March. And April was the month that you left in mid-month. Correct. Did you pay any rent to the defendant in March? Yes. How much? $500. Is that correct? No, Your Honor. Did she give you any money in March? No. Did she give you any money in February? No. From the time she moved in, did she give you any money? No. We were a boyfriend, girlfriend. And? She lived in my residence. There was no money forwarded. There was no money that she gave you? No. How did you handle household bills, telephone, etc.? I worked as a steel worker, and I paid for my own bills. Well, what did she do with her bills? She had her own bills. She what paid, bills? She had medical bills, a, a furniture bill. Okay. Did she purchase furniture for the home? No, she had furniture when she came to the residence. Okay. And did she take that furniture when she left? No. So it's in your residence? No. Where is it? She returned it back to the finance company. So is that the furniture that she was paying for while it was in your home? Yes. Okay. Any other bills that you say she had? She had some outstanding debt. From what, Ms. Regsdale? What outstanding debt? Uh, I do have some traffic tickets um, and also some medical bills and student loans. And that was the only outstanding debt that I had. Okay. What kind of work do you do? I'm disabled. I have cancer and fibromyalgia. And how much do you get from disability? Approximately 1500 a month. And you were receiving $1,500 a month while you were living with the defendant? Correct. And tell me what your arrangement was with the defendant with regard to rent. I was to pay him $500 at the beginning of each month. Do you have proof that you paid him that amount? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. I paid him cash, but here is my bank statement. The first month I took out 500 and these are eviction notices that he gave me to prove that I was paying rent to him also.
Well, I see that you did, in fact, file a 30-day notice to leave the premises, indicating that she was your month-to-month -month tenant. You did sign this. You signed two of them, one on the 12th of April and one on the 20th of April. Yes, because I was asking her to leave for four months, and she wouldn't leave, so I had to do something. And another thing, uh, it's the $500 on that statement... Does that say that she was providing rent to me? No. It was a statement. It's just a statement. It's absolutely no check. It's absolutely no proof so. that she gave you. But what she said to me is, here, when you gave her a 30-day notice, you weren't asking her to leave as just your boyfriend and girlfriend. Do you understand, Mr. Peterson? It's a slight problem that you have from a procedural perspective, because if she was your girlfriend and she was living there and you were supporting her, then you have no basis to have her evicted as a tenant. A tenant is someone who enjoys a landlord and tenant relationship, which means that there is an exchange of rent money in exchange for the tenancy. Do you understand? That's what the 30-day notice is. So she is providing this. Now, she may be slick. It may be just slick because she knows that you were trying to get her out. Clearly, he was trying to get you to move. We were engaged in December. so that He was trying months. to get you Correct. to move. Correct. And you didn't move. Why didn't you move? The only day that we had discussed about moving was the prior day, April 15th, when he had abused me and broken my wrist. And then, well, then the he filed day, he another one paper. on April 20th. No, one of those is signed by his mother, and one of them is signed by him. Well, the one that's signed by his mother is April 12th. The one that's signed by him is April 20th. Right. They gave him to me on the same day in court. In which court? In domestic court. When I had an order of protection against him. They gave me that at that time. And this act that precipitated the court date took place on what date? The 14th and 15th. 14th and 15th? Correct. Now, at the beginning of April, were you sharing the same room yes. at night? You were. Is that correct? Yes. So between, say, April 1st and April 7th, you shared a bedroom? Yes. Yes. Between April 7th and April 14th, did you share a bedroom? For the nights I was home, yes. I was in the hospital part of that time, yes. In the hospital, non-related to any correct. incident involving the defendant. Correct. Now, how many nights between the 7th and the 15th or the 14th were you in the hospital? I believe I went into the hospital on the 12th and I came home the 14th. Or it might have been the 11th when I went in. It was the 11th or 12th. I was in the ICU. Was that related to your cancer? My sugar was really high. I had an infection. So between the 7th and the 12th, you did share a room? Correct. And then you had some sort of an altercation on the 12th. Is that correct, sir? Yes. The 14th. You want to... It's the 14th, she says. So let's say it's the 14th. You want to tell me what happened? She came home from the hospital. Her blood sugar was over 900 and started making action. About what? Accuse me of this, that, and the other. Well, what's uh, this, was... that, and the other? that I was cheating on her. Okay, and that's one. That's not this and that. That's just uh, this. That I, was, that I was cheating on her and that she wanted her rent money back and accusing me of my okay. kids being so she, her. Just a second. Hold on. That you were cheating on her. That she wanted her rent money back. So now I have a this and the that. Now we're going to go to the other thing. What else? She came into the room, got into my pants pocket, took my wallet. I went to grab my wallet back. She wouldn't give it back to me. She went to grab your wallet in order to get her rent money back. Yes. Okay, go ahead. And I seen her credit cards there on the side of her purse. I grabbed her wallet. She tried grabbing it back. I grabbed my wallet back, and that's supposedly when I broke her arm. So you were having an argument? Yes. Now, when you say supposedly broke her arm, did she have a broken wrist? No. So if she has medical records that suggest that on the 14th, 15th, she went to the hospital with a broken wrist. That would not be as a result of any altercation that the two of you had. No. Great. Do you have those medical records? Yes, I do. I'd like to see them. So far, it's not looking good for you, Mr. Peterson. I'm going to tell you why, sir. Because according to you, she wanted her rent money back. But there was no money forwarded. I don't believe you. I don't believe you because she's not nuts. Totally nuts. Otherwise, you wouldn't have asked her to marry you and lived with you. So she wanted her rent money back because she was going to leave, because she believed that you were cheating on her, which is a possibility. Who is this? This is my niece. She knows about the relationship that you had with the plaintiff? Yes. She knows about anything else consistent with anything that's going on with this case? Yes. What? She knows about the altercations that we had. Oh, and altercations. I'm talking about the 14th, 15th. Were you yeah. present on those days? Not on the 14th, no. So you weren't present for this altercation that is being sued for? No, a different one. Well, that's not here. Right. I don't, she's not suing for that. Well, I have a charges here. Let's see. Well, she went to the hospital that day. Well, her wrist was broken. 
after this altercation that you had, you called the police? I was able to call the police on the 15th. And? They came out to the house. They did not arrest Mr. Pedersen. Let me ask you a question. After this altercation, did you stay the night? I did because the police made him leave. Well, on the 14th, he took my car keys and phone, and I was unable to go anywhere. So I was able to secure myself in the bottom part of the house, and he stayed upstairs where his mother lives. So we were separated, and then the next morning, he came back downstairs. The police made him leave the house on Sunday which was the 15th. Okay, so this is my problem so far. My problem so far, Mr. Peterson, is that you did have an altercation. She went to your wallet to take out what she wanted was the return of her rent money. You went after her wallet, then you started struggling over both of those items, and as a result of that, her wrist got broken. That's what happened. But where were the police reports? There was a domestic. Why wasn't I arrested? I don't know, sir. Maybe you know the police. Do you know the police officers who responded to the scene? No. You never saw them before. I've seen no, him before. My I question is, Kelly. never saw him before. That's my question. Yes, I've seen him before. Of course you did. Maybe that's why. I don't know. It's just supposition as to why you weren't arrested, sir. I don't know why. Had you ever seen those police officers before who responded to the scene? I haven't, but I do know that he... Don't tell okay. me what you know. Okay. I, I, have, I have personally never seen them, no. Maybe that's why. Now, anything you want to tell me, Mr. Peterson? Uh, I have police reports here of her harassing me, following me. I'd love to see uh, them. Order of protection on me and my kids. Okay, so I have one dated May 25th, 2012. I officer. Was that one of the officers that responded to the scene on April 15th? No, he didn't. He was not? No. Perfect. Okay, listen to me. I would stay away from him. Oh, believe me, I had to move out of state because of him. I would stay away from him. I moved to Georgia to get away from him. Okay. Judge Judy continues in a moment. History and assault. Alice is also suing for rent and the cost of a family vacation. Did you appear for a hearing on an order of protection? Yes, I did. And what happened when you appeared at the hearing? We were both granted orders of protections. You have one against him? Yes. And he has one against you? Correct. I'd like to see yours against him. And here's also a police report where he violated the order of protection by calling me and leaving me voicemails. Okay. Now, Mr. Peterson, aside from you and your mother, I don't see anybody else here that identifies this lady as harassing you after April 15th. Only you and your mom. Anything else you want to tell me? Uh, my niece witnessed, witnessed an incident what? at the house. When? April 15th. She said she did not. No, not on the 14th. On the 15th, I did. Oh, good. So, Great. On the 15th, is that before or after her wrist got broken? I believe that's after. After her wrist got broken. Right. Go. My mother and I, we were on our way out to the hospital to pick up a purse for my daughter. We were taking the street that goes by my grandma's house. I see my grandmother, Alice, and Jeff all outside. Alice is standing there with her fist like this, and Jeff is facing her, and my grandmother's on the porch. So I turn for the mere fact that my grandmother's old, and she's on oxygen, and she's dealing with these two. So we stop. Alice, she has a cell phone. She's got the cord. She's egging Jeff on, like, to beat the band. You wouldn't believe. I told Jeff, I said, get to the house. Get away from her. He goes. She follows. I said, you stay right here, and you stay away from him. She proceeds to tell me, hit me, hit me, constantly, like, a wind-up toy so I walked away from her and then she follows us all the way to the house when I'm trying to separate them she antagonizes him no don't to, tell me don't tell me she antagonized what okay. did she do she was Six. just following him all the way to the house and at that point I don't even know what she was saying other than hit me hit me hit me hit me hit me to me so I walked away she proceeds to hit me or whip me with her phone cord and I just picked it up thought I was smart because I'm like, oh, you're wanting me to hit you and then you're whipping me. So then we go up to the house to tell her to leave because my grandmother lives there and Jeff lives there. She will not leave. So the cops were called and Jeff and his kids went to my house and my grandmother went to my mom's house because she would not leave the house. If he was that bad, why wouldn't she have wanted to leave? Did she do all these things? With she was, her fists were clenched. With a fractured wrist? Yeah. I'm just, yes, I, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Was her wrist fractured? I didn't know that at the time. All she, she didn't have a cast. What did she have? She had a little splint. It wasn't casted. So no, I didn't know. And so, for the way she So just was, a second. Okay. So you don't know, and you don't know what happened right. the night before? No. Good. Not at that point. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Go. 
Actually, um, dear Lynn, she was there the day that Jennifer's talking about. How were you related to each other? Do you know each other? Yes, we're friends. Were you there with her? I had gone to pick her up to take her to the hospital. You went to take her to the hospital? Yes. Did she call you that morning? She had called me, um, said she was, was having some problems with Jeff, and she was hurting and needed to go to the hospital. Okay. So you came to pick her up? I took her to the hospital. Because I Were only lived seven minutes. Were you there during this incident with them? I didn't see that incident. I didn't know anything about it. What time did you get there to pick her up to take her to the hospital that morning? I don't even remember the time. Did you stay with her in the hospital? I did because she was going to need a ride back. Did you give her a ride back? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Where did you take her to? I took her back to the Mr. residence. Patterson's house. Yes. Did you have a discussion with her about why she would go back to the residence? Because I assume she told you what had happened I, the night before. Yes, I did. And she had told me that the officers had said that she could stay there because she did not have anywhere to go. She had no friends in the town. What about you? I live in public housing. So I we are not allowed to have guests. So she said she had no place to go. Correct. When you left her there, did you leave her inside the residence or outside the residence? Outside. Outside? Yes. Thank you. Was it afterwards that this incident took place? No, I, th I think she meant she didn't, wasn't there for the incident that happened on the 14th. She did see the incident that Jennifer was talking about. Did you see the incident that this... I don't remember that incident. Doesn't remember. Doesn't remember. All right. Go ahead. This is a, a court documented paper and it has her address as 234, which would be the public housing. Whose address? Darylin's, where address. Alice was living. We use that as a protective address. No, no, no. Listen, did you consent to a protective order, sir? The answer is yes or no. Yes. And the basis for her protective order was an assault. That's why she says she filed for the protective order, because you assaulted her and broke her wrist. I didn't break her wrist. That's what she said in the protective order. She consented to a protective order that she was going to stay away from you. She consented to staying away from you, and she, in fact, did stay away from you as far away as possible and moved out of state. The question that I have to resolve is whether or not you owe her for half a month's rent. You say she didn't. I think you're lying, and I think she gave you money, and I think that she came home. She believed that you were cheating on her. She said, give me my rent money back because I want to leave, and you said no. You went and had a struggle over your wallet and her purse. But that in and of itself, your statement suggests to me that she had given you rent money every month, 500 bucks. So you owe her $250. The rest of the $4,700 comes as a result of the fact that I think you assaulted her and broke her wrist. Judgment for the plaintiff, that's all. What is our excuse, Ms. Step? I asked her politely to move out and she would not leave. It's an emotional time to be abused by somebody and your whole life changes. <laughs> She tried becoming really forceful in the relationship because I wasn't spending enough time with her. It went from love to absolute hate, just it's horrible. I was spending more time with my children and I tried explaining to her that it was a package deal when she got into it. It's hard. And I was not spending enough time with her. You think you have the whole world and then it's gone. And it was just an ongoing and you may be seated. Mr. and Mrs. Vaughn, this is your son. It is your claim that while you've loaned him money in the past and given him money in the past, you made an explicit loan to him in the amount of $3,500 in order to retain an attorney to help him in a custody dispute that he had with the mother of his child. You want that money back. And your son says that that money, which he acknowledges that you gave to the lawyer on his behalf, was a gift. And you used that money in order to ensure that the paternal family would continue to have contact with your grandchild. That's your defense? Yes, sir. Yes. How old are you? 25. What do you do for a living? I do basic and general farm labor work. You have one child? Yes. Boy? Yes. And he lives with his mother? Yes. You and his mother married? No. How old is he? He's two. Do your parents have any other grandchildren? Three other grandchildren. Do they see the three other grandchildren often? Not as often as what they do my son. And how often do they see your son? Well, when I was living there, it was a every time that he'd come to stay with me that he was seeing my folks as well and now it's i don't know because i don't have contact with my folks why because of this whole case they got all mad and everything when what i do you moved think out. you got mad about because my dad's the type that's real controlling he told me that either i went in and got a joint savings account with him or i could get out of his house you mean because of the money that you owed him and the bills no why because he thought i was going out partying it up were you no I was going to work and coming home. Well, what do you think made them turn on you, Mr. Vaughn? I don't know. I really don't, Your Honor. Well, let me ask them. <laughs> what happened, Mr. Vaughn? 
we borrowed him the $3,500 for the attorney. With, loaned him. Loaned him, borrowed. He borrowed, you loaned. Okay. With the agreement that it would be paid back at $150 a month. I want to know what that conversation was. That we would loan him the money. How did you know he needed the money? Because he needed a retainer for an attorney for his visitation. Just a minute. How did you know that? He told us. Well, that's what I want to hear about. I just told you. No, you didn't. <laughs> No, you didn't, Mr. Vaughn. I want to know. He came to the house and he said, you know, Jane and I aren't together anymore. I want visitation. She won't give me visitation. I have to hire a lawyer. I don't have money for a lawyer. Can I borrow some money from you to get a lawyer? That's a conversation. Now, I don't want to hear my words repeated by you. I want to hear what the conversation was between you or your wife with your son with regard to this retainer. That's what I want to hear. Now, do you understand? Yeah, and that's what Great. I told you. No, you didn't tell me anything, sir. I didn't hear about the discussion. I tried to give you an example of what I was looking for as far as the conversation was concerned, not you saying to me, I loaned him money, and he said he would pay me back at $150 a month. I said, when did that happen? Where were you? What did he say to you? What did you say to him? That's what I want to hear. Can she, I mean, maybe sure. she can explain it better. Okay. What was transpiring is he got papers from mother of his child, and she was going to try and go for full custody. Just a second. He got the papers, he opened them up, or he was served with them, and said, I want to hear what the conversation was. Well, he basically informed us as to what the paperwork said. Okay. That she was going for full custody. Yes. And we all three agreed that it wasn't right. Fine. So you discussed the fact that you thought it wasn't right that she should have full custody. Yes. We Great. Keep going. Jeff wanted to be in his life, so we told him, what do you want to do in order to make this happen? And? And he said that he wanted to fight for his son. Good. So far, he, perfect. He does not have the financial means, so we lent him the money so he could get an attorney. It's not a contract. What you've told me is not a contract. What you told me is, we'll give you the money to get a lawyer. If you want to fight it, we want to help you fight it. That's what I'm hearing. It can't help you. No, but when we, we it was never said him, that we would give him or help him. him. It was a loan. But and I, as long as he I, listen to me, scenario. that's what you say, that is a conclusion. And I've really spent a lot of time trying to get the facts from the both of you. You're the plaintiffs. You're the ones who have to say to me, these are the terms of the oral contract. This was the conversation I had. We were in our house. I said to him, he said to me, I've given you more of an opportunity to do that than I tell you, than I would do with a lot of other uh, people. A lot of other people. And what I'm getting from you is, like if one of my children came to me and didn't have money in that circumstance and said, I want to fight for my child, I would say, I know you don't have the means, which is what you said. I know he doesn't have the means. Here's the forum. And that's not a contract. That's what I'm hearing. Do you but understand? after... He went and found a lawyer. That's when we made the agreement as to what it was going to be. We didn't know oh, what an fine. attorney. Well, then let's go back. Who found the lawyer? He did. Where did you find the lawyer? I had contacted a buddy that had used her before, prior. Fine. And you went to see the lawyer? I did. And you had a conversation with the lawyer, told you what the retainer was going to be? She did. She did. Great. What did you do next? I went home, and my dad asked me what I had found out. I said, well, she says it's a $2,500 retainer. Nothing was said until my mom come home. They discussed it, I guess. I don't know. And all of a sudden they come to me and said, we'll give you the $2,500 to retain that lawyer. Fine. Did you make them a promise to pay them back at the rate of $150 a month? No. You did not? No. Yes, yes he, he did. did. When? After he came home and we discussed the retainer cost. No. And he was unable to finance it himself. We asked him what he wanted to do. As far okay. as well, now we're talking. You see, now we're having a conversation. As far as the attorney fees, no, he... you have to understand something. There's certain things that make sense and certain things that don't. And you would not have a conversation and say, "Son, what do you want to do with regard to the attorney's fees?" Because you know that he can't afford to pay for it himself. So you know, say to him, "Son, what do you want to do about the attorney's fees?" You see, to say to him, "We're going to give you the money, and here it is," or. We'll give it to you, but it's a loan. I want you to understand it's a loan, and it has to be paid back. And that's what was told to him. Well, but that's not what you're saying to me, sir. And you want to know something, Mr. Vaughn? Mm -hmm. You may have good reason to be annoyed with him. You don't have any reason to be annoyed with me up until right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, you're trying to go someplace where you shouldn't go, which is making things up with me. I'm not making things up. Sir, I don't believe that you ever said to him, what do you want to do about paying the attorney's fees? I don't think you ever said those words to your son. Yes, I did. Mm -mm. I don't believe it. We had asked him how he, want, how he was going to pay for it, and he said he didn't know. We didn't know if he was going to try and get a loan, and he said he didn't know. So don't buy it. 
Don't buy it for one minute. You and your husband are actually saying two entirely different things. You understand that? You are. You and your husband are saying two entirely different things. And you really should get over it. Does he do anything different now from when he was living with you? Does he work as a farm worker? Yes, he still is, as was far he as far we know. Was he a farm worker when he was living with you? Yes. Part-time. Was, was he giving you any money for rent? No. No. He's not living with you anymore. Is he paying rent? No. I, I have no I idea. I have no idea. Well, yes. he has to live someplace. He's not living with his parents, so I assume he has expenses that he didn't have when he was living with you, right? Yes. Yeah, where do you expect him to get $3,500 from? Well, the same place that we had to come up with it for well, him. Well, how did you come up with it? We had to save. We had saved for a long time before we were able to do it, and we had it saved up. Yeah, good. Can't help no. me. That's all. Goodbye. We're done. Bodies are excused. You may step out. You know, I hated that it had to come down to this. There isn't one. I mean, we're family. Family doesn't do this to family. There's there's no connection no more. They just don't. He's my son. I'll always love him. And sometimes you have to use tough love. You know, that my parents and I can still talk, still have good times together. Unfortunately, tough love wasn't working in our favor this time. But I know that's going to take time. And time may not even fix this. Mr. Dial, I read your complaint and the answer to the complaint. The defendant, you say, owes you some money as a result of a series of loans that you made to her. Ms. Mason says that while you did, in fact, give her money, there were never any loans. They were gifts that you made to her because she was in need. I gather from Ms. Mason, at least from what she says, that you met her on a trip to... I met her in Oswego, New York, last year. And according to her, you met when you asked her for directions. Yes, ma'am. Explain that to me. Um, I was out looking for a Walmart in the area. I did see Chelsea at a convenience store. I did ask her for directions. And from there, we kind of struck up a conversation, became friends, and hung out quite a bit within the next two weeks that I was on the job assignment. What kind of work were you doing? Nuclear maintenance work. What kind of work were you doing? I don't work. How do you support yourself? I'm, I'm a student. I model. Okay. How much money did you give her, sir? Approximately twenty-five hundred dollars, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five eighty-six for what? A car purchase of a vehicle. Well, tell me about it. Yes, ma'am. On May the seventeenth is whenever I give her the money for a vehicle. Prior to that, let me let me back up. Well, if you met May her and, and hung out with her, Mr. Dial, you would know she doesn't work. She's unemployed. That was last year, ma'am. She doesn't work now either. Now she is a model. She doesn't has stated work. to me that she was a model at this she time. She may have stated to you she was a model at that time, but Mr. Dial, she wasn't working then, and she's not working now. So how did you expect her to give you back $2,600? I had seen her ad online with her pictures, knowing that she was a model. Show me. Yes, ma'am. I did. Can I see what she has for Okay. Very good. Now, that doesn't mean she has a job. That means she's advertising to pose for pictures. So, Mr. Dial. Yes, ma'am. I want you briefly to go through what you gave her money for. Yes, ma'am. On the 17th of May, I gave her $1,000 for a 94 model Lexus. I believe it was 94. May 17th, 2000 and? 12. 12. You gave her $1,000 for a Lexus. What date did you meet her? The second time I met her was this year of May 9th. Well, the first time you met her was asking her for directions in front of a 7-Eleven. Yes, ma'am. And what date was that? It was April of 2011. Okay. And then you didn't see her for a year? We hung out quite a bit within those two weeks. Two weeks? I was there last year, got very close with each other. You got very close. How close, Mr. Dial? I mean, if you read her ad, you saw she was married. She comes to work, according to the ad that she posted on the web, she comes to work with her husband. So don't think about doing anything weird. That was this year, ma'am. That was what year? Of 2012. That's when I found out that she was married and back with her husband. In 2011, okay. she was married, separated. That's what she told you? Yes, ma'am. Right. So now you met her again a year later, and you met her on May 9th. And then she told you on May 9th that she's back with her husband, because that's what you read here. Yes, ma'am. Right? So she's back with her husband. So what are you doing giving her $1,000 for Alexis? She stated that she was leaving her husband. Very mm -hmm. bad relationship. The weekend of the 12th, 13th of May, she left her husband, said he had took the vehicle, has two children that she needed a car to get back and forth to work. Back and forth to what work? To her photo shoots. She wasn't doing photo shoots. Okay, ma'am. I can only trust her. Yeah, okay. Trust. Go ahead. Come on, Mr. Dial. You know, there's a difference between trust and acting stupid. Yes, ma'am. You have a reasonable job. You sound like a reasonably intelligent guy. You know, either you weren't thinking with a part of your anatomy that it's above your neck, or you weren't being smart. I'm not sure which one. 
So let's move on. May 9th, you saw her again. May 17th, he gave her $1,000 for Lexus. What's next? On the 21st, I gave her $500 for the insurance and fines that she had to pay to get the car registered. What kind of fines did she have to pay? Ma'am, I do not know. So you gave her another $500? Yes, ma'am. And between the 9th and the 21st, how much time did you spend with Miss Mason? I was in Texas on a job assignment. So you were very close like you were the year before? The year before, we had spent quite a bit of time I together. I heard you. I got it, Mr. Dial. Okay. I'm not stupid, you know. Keep going. On the 26th, I gave her another $400 to actually have the car registered. Great. What's next? On the 31st, I gave her $275 to help her with her rent. And? and? The final money was for an airline ticket for her to come out to Oregon, where I was at the time, so that we could travel across the country back to New York, spend more time together. Great. We still where were her children? Her, her children was to be kept with her mother. She did not come to Oregon because child care fell through. That's what she told you? Yes, ma'am. That's what she told me. Mm -hmm. Great. So? So, basically, we did not spend a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one time together. The year of 2012, we spent more time on the phone talking and building our relationship in 2012 by phone. 2012, you're talking about three weeks in May. Yes, ma'am. When you got snookered out of $2,600. Yes, ma'am. So what do you want from the courts, Mr. Dial? Your Honor, in the conversations prior to me giving her money for the purchase of the vehicle, she stated, and I had no reason to doubt her, that what do you, she had what a do you job? mean you have no reason to doubt her? You didn't know her. The woman that you met on the side of the road, you spent two weeks with her, really separated from her husband, then you don't hear from her for a year. Then you hook up again a year later, and three days later you give her $1,000. I mean, what do you mean you had no reason to doubt her? You had every reason to doubt her. Okay. If you were thinking with this, okay. couldn't pay a rent, couldn't pay fines, so she couldn't get a license, had to take care of that, yes, couldn't pay insurance, and you never saw a paycheck. I see all this now. Just a second. Well, I know. We see all yes. this now, Mr. Dial. So I'm, has, what I'm asking you is, what do you want from the courts? I would like to have the reimbursement on this money that she told me that she could repay me. Oh. She had two children. Oh, she had two children. Where are your two children now? And my mom's. And where do you live? In Phoenix, New York. And where does your mother live? In Phoenix. You live with your mother? I'm staying with her. So that your children live with your mother because you're staying with your mother? Yes. When do they see their father? They don't. How long has it been since they've seen their father? About two months. Did you ever tell him you would pay him this money back? No. Why do you think he gave you the money? To help me. Did you tell him you needed help? Yeah. Did you ever meet her children, Mr. Dial? Yes, ma'am. How many times? One of the children I met two or three different times, both of them together, May the 9th of this year. May the 9th? Of this year. Where? Yes, we had met at IHOP. It was crowded. We left and went to a McDonald's, sat and had coffee. The girls, her children, I bought little ice cream cones just so we could visit. And then you saw the other child when? Last year when Chelsea and I met. I'm talking about this year. This year is when I met both of them. So you met both children once, really? Yes, ma'am. And nothing since? She needed money for rent. Did you go to the apartment where she was living? No, ma'am. I was in Texas on the job assignment at that time. When did you move in with your mother? About two weeks ago. And where had you lived before that? Buffalo, New York. With whom? Just me and the kids. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dial. I can't help you, sir. You got snookered out of $2,600. Ma'am, I have two emails, text messages right here that states Chelsea did say that she would pay me back. Fine. I'm going to take a look at them. Well, so the first email that I'm seeing is on June 6th. And you say to her, I'm kind of hurt that you haven't sent me a single email all day. That's what makes me question your feelings for me. I hope you've just been busy. And then she says, still no phone, no gas. We just can't bring the kids, need a printer. And that was also Wednesday, June 6th. And then it says, how long will it take you to get to Walmart? And then she says to you, just leave me alone. I will try and repay you as quickly as I can. I'm gone for good, sick of threats by men and being treated like not well. And then you say to her, did you intentionally turn off your phone or do you need me to pay your phone bill so it will be turned on? Sir. I can't help you. You got snookered. You were a man who was smitten. Smitten by somebody who clearly either wasn't smitten with you or used you for money. <laughs> either way, courts can't help you. You had no legitimate expectation of being repaid a penny. Not based on this and not based on the emails. Your case is dismissed. Goodbye. Pardon your excuse. You may step out. It was all to get her car established for her and her two girls. Do I have to make a comment? I really have no regrets for helping her out due to the fact of her two children. I don't really want to make a comment. Had she not had children, I probably would not have gone near as far as I did to help her. No, this. I can't trust people, obviously. Society is just like this. I'm from a judge, Judy. It's very sad.
And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Murray versus Lawrence. Step forward. David Murray is suing 22-year-old Patrick Lawrence for shooting out the window of his car. Mr. Murray, you own a car. Yes. And you loaned the car to a friend. Yes, I did. To whom did you loan the car? To Miss Elba Palat, to my right. Could you stand up, please? When did you loan her the car? On July 12th, 2012. For what purpose? She wanted to uh, use the vehicle to take her daughter to work. And how do you know her? We've been good friends. What kind of car is it? It was a 2000 Chevy Ventura. This is your lawsuit. What's your first name? Elba Palatz. When Miss Palatz was driving the car, it is your claim that this gentleman was shooting his BB gun and shot through the windshield. The back rear window on the passenger oh. side. A window? Yes. And you want him to pay for that? Yes, I do. What time did this happen and where were you? It happened about 5.30 in the afternoon. I was in um, my sister's house with the car, but I wanted to go outside and smoke because you can't smoke in my sister's house. I went outside and I heard the bang. Well, I didn't know what happened, but I have a witness that saw what happened. Could you stand up? Your name? Virginia Galumba. What were you doing in this area? I was going to pick up my friend who uh, lives next door to her sister. It was about 5.30? Right. Could you tell me what you saw? I was parked about 10 feet behind Ms. Palat, and I saw a gun coming out of the second story window of the apartment building. And I heard the shattering of the glass. I saw Ms. Palat come off her front porch, and I told her what I saw. I saw a gun coming out that window. You know which window it was? It was a second right-hand window, second floor. Did Mr. Lawrence come downstairs? Um, no, he didn't. No, I, the police came, and I told them what happened. They went upstairs, but nobody, I went with them. We knocked on the door, nobody opened the door. So at this point, they left, and I kept yelling because I was very, very upset that they did this to my friend's car. And yes, I was yelling some bad words, and I was really, really upset. And uh, this time, he opens the window, and I asked them, look what they did to my car from your window, from your house. He goes, I'll be right down. He comes down, and at this point, I'm still very upset. I'm pointing to the car, and I'm telling him, this came out of your house. Look what you, oh, he tells me, I didn't do it, but I'm taking responsibility for it. Who did it? Well, who else was in your apartment? Other me, my fiance, my Just son. Just a second. You? My fiance. Your fiance, would that be this young lady? No, that's my sister. She that's was also You, there. your fiance. My son. And how old is he? Eight months. Well, he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> who else? My sick mother. Your mother, who's sick, so she didn't do it. No. Who else was there? And my sister. And your sister. That's and her. I didn't do it. And she didn't do it. No. Well, that leaves you or your fiance. And she didn't do it, and I didn't do it. Well, then that's a problem. Then some ghost out of your window did it. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I'm taking responsibility. What does that I, mean? I never said that. What did you say? When I came to my window, I came to the window because I heard a lot of profanity in English and Spanish. Some I understood, some I didn't. I came to my window. She said, does anybody have a BB gun? I said, hold on one second. I'll be down to talk to you. When I went down to talk to Ms. Pella, she said, somebody shattered my window hours ago. And I said, nobody at my residence owned a BB gun. I said, I will exchange numbers with you, try to get to the bottom of it, because there were several kids in the area that owned BB guns and that's shut up targets and shoot and different stuff like that. I couldn't even really talk to Ms. Pellet because she was just so furious and I thought she was going to pounce on me. So I was talking to another gentleman. He's not here at today. I talked to him. I exchanged numbers, yeah. told him I know somebody that work at a junkyard. I will look into the vehicle. I even took a picture of the car and that was it for that moment until I started getting a barrage of text messages saying somebody's going to pay me and everything like that. And the police actually came to my neighbor's house. There's two apartments on the first floor and there's two apartments on the second floor. They came to my neighbor's house. I never talked to the police or anything. Your Honor, Do you have I have Texas. I'd like to see them, please. He's saying a couple hours <laughs> later. I was notified by her by 6.30 p.m., so obviously he knew something was up. And it came from the so porch. They said porch, not window. And again, she said in the, in the initial court papers that her witness saw me firing a BB gun from the porch. This is the first I'm hearing about a window. They made a mistake from the porch. She meant the window. Stop. Don't speak. I can't pay $200 for something I'm not even sure was caused by anyone in my house. Did you write that? Yes. Good. Can I see the bill for the uh, window, please? How much did you sell the car for, sir? A thousand something dollars. Don't look down. Oh. Look here. You sold it for a thousand dollars when? Give me the date. In August, I believe, around 14th mm. or 15th. Okay. 
cost you $200? For the window, yes. Yes. Well, that's what you get paid for. Right. Judging for the plaintiff, $200. That's right. <laughs> Why does it look so weird when they step out? It was just so many lies on their part and on their behalf that it doesn't even really make sense. Nobody else was in the house but him that could actually do it. I was so angry, and I just wanted to talk to him and tell him, listen, are you going to pay me my money? Because he already told me he's not going to pay. It was just a whole lot of a whole lot of BS over nothing. And I was trying to be the good guy and trying to help her out. They harassed us after the fact. We were at a gas station. They came up being irate, Miss Elba, and a couple of her other friends and her daughter demanding money that really we shouldn't have had to pay because we didn't do it. He just ran in the car and ran away. But it's what it is. I hope they're happy. Don't believe everything you see. Just Judy, she has the final call on it, so... No, maybe I need to go read her book and try to get up on some knowledge myself next time I come to court. See it, folks have seen it. Who's going to speak for you? I am. How do you know these people? I rented a RV space on their property. When did you rent an RV space on their property? It started in April of 2011. And what was the monthly rent? Five fifty. Are you still there? Yes. When was the last time you paid them rent? The end of April of 2012. Why? Because we started cleaning their property up for them because they were going to sell the property. So is what you're telling me your last name is? Mitchell. Miss Mitchell, is what you're telling me that you entered into a new arrangement with them starting in April of 2012, that in lieu of rent of $550, you would work for them? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Is that correct? No. They stopped paying you rent, according to her, in April of 2012. Since that time, have they paid you anything? No. No. This is what your complaint is. Your complaint is that they got tired of you being there and they purposely damaged your mobile home that was on their property and you want them to be responsible for it. Yes, I want him to be responsible for ruining my home, yes. Ms. Mitchell, you do understand that when people come into court, they have to come into court if they're asking the courts to help them. Mm -hmm. They have to come come into court with clean hands, which means they have to have done everything correctly, but don't annoy me. They have to do everything correctly so that the courts want to help them. Mm -hmm. Now, you would agree that if someone doesn't pay rent and squats on somebody else's property, right. thereby stealing their property, because you're stealing that space from them, and there was no reason for you not to pay rent, then you wouldn't have clean hands. And whether they dropped a bomb on your motorhome, blew it up, ran over it with a forklift, or flooded it, I would not be inclined to help you. I want you to understand that. A court would not be inclined to help you if you were stealing their property. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to you to convince me, before we even get to the allegation that they damaged your mobile home, you explain to me the contract that you say superseded the rental agreement that you had with them for $550 a month. Go. I started cleaning up the property. He, I was happy with it, okay? He, we never really, we had an oral agreement saying no, just that. Tell, no, stop fumfering. Fumfering. April, April 2012 was right. the last time you paid rent. That's right. You allege you entered into an agreement with them that you would do something for them, you would work for them in lieu of rent. I want to hear when that took place, who was present, when you started, what you did in consideration of the... I talked with Jeff through all of this. Just a second. So you had a conversation with Jeff. Yes. When? At the end of April 2012, when I started cleaning up all the all garbage that was left behind. Just a second. Had you had a discussion with him about not paying rent? No. That wasn't a discussion. What was the... Move over! And don't touch her again. Do you understand? I don't want you to elbow her. I don't want you to touch her. I just want you to stand there like a mummy until I speak to you. Do you understand? Go ahead. There wasn't a discussion, actually. I just started cleaning it up, and he was saying I was doing a great job. He was happy with it. It was looking good. And? And I kept on doing it. And? And kept on doing it. And? And never received a monthly invoice for it like we usually do for a month's rent at all. From then on, I have not received an invoice for rent because of all the work I've been doing. So what you're telling me is you never had... Never have? What you're telling me is you never had a discussion with him about working no. in lieu of rent. You just started cleaning it up. Let me make sure that I understand you. You started cleaning up the property. Yes. And after you started cleaning up the property, you didn't get a monthly invoice. 
so you didn't pay any rent. That's right. That's what you're telling me. So there was never, he said, she said, this right. was a meeting of the minds. Yeah. That's not a contract. A contract is, I will clean your property, which is actually the property where you live, right? You right. were cleaning up the property where you lived. That's right. I will clean up the property, and I don't want to have to pay rent anymore, so in lieu of rent, we're going to barter the rent. I clean. I don't pay rent. You get a nicer piece of property. I get a nicer piece of property to live on, and everybody's happy. That conversation didn't take place. You just started to clean and stop paying rent. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to you. You want to say something? Yes, I did have that conversation with Jeff where he said that, well, I'm not going to have you pay rent because of all the work you've done here. When did you have that conversation it was, with him? Uh, I'm not as good with dates as she is. No, no, no. She's not good with dates because she never had the conversation. She didn't even know about the conversation, sir. And that's why I don't believe you because if you had that conversation with her, you would have told her about it. And she said, I never had that conversation with him. Nobody had that conversation with him. He just stopped sending invoices. So I don't believe you. Do you understand? And you understand why I don't believe you, right? Perfect. When was the first month that they asked you to leave? At the end of July of 2012, they said they were going to sell their property. They didn't ask us to leave. But they left for two weeks, came back on August 11th, and handed us a 30-day notice. And? And said that they were going to sell the property. So, why didn't you move? You weren't paying rent. You hadn't paid rent in April. April, May, June, July, August. Right. They finally sent you a notice to leave the property. And now we are in almost December, and you're right. still there. I know. Well, you can't be there. Because two days after the, that, they, he's asking us to do more work, to pull ice plant down from the, the, the top house because they want it to look good before they sell it. So it's 10 acres of property. and they Why needed to, huh? didn't you leave? You weren't paying rent. They told you to leave. They he didn't served tell me to leave. He handed him a 30-day notice and then asked us to help him get the property looking better so he can sell any money. They don't owe me any money? Not a penny. This has nothing to do with rent, first of oh, all. Yes, it does. This has, does it? Oh, yes. I just explained, if you were paying attention and, uh, to what right, I no, said, if oh, you no, were no, paying no. attention to what I said, I started out by telling Thank you, you listen to me carefully, listening ears, I started out by telling you that when people come into court, they have mm. to come in with clean hands. That's right. Which means, mm -hmm. no, you came to court. They did not. That's right. You came to court. Okay, that's right. They did not. That's right. So you have to have clean hands you I'll have to pay rent right you have to pay rent and then no. and then if they do something bad to you like try to remove your property oh, where you have been squatting for eight months no. then i say you know what Here. they paid their rent and i have because you have my, some of my work documentation of the work that nobody would do this for free Hi, just a second you're not paying attention sir you have to have certain rules when there is not a written agreement. He bought when there is, listen to me, when there is an oral contract, there has to be an offer, an acceptance, and consideration. According to Ms. Mitchell, yes. there was never such a contract. What she said to me was, I no, started no. doing work there around the place, and he stopped sending me rent invoices. That's right. That's what you said. That's, That's right. not a contract. They stopped sending me rent invoices. That's and not a contract. Can I, can, I, can I say something now? It's now they're going to take us to court on the 17th for rent again? That's what they well, should they have can, done. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's not going to happen. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Barbara Mitchell and Mark Alvis are accusing landlords Jamie and Jeff Johnson of destroying their property. Ms. Mitchell, I tried to explain something to you. I, You're I, not paying attention. Mm -hmm. I said, when people come to court as plaintiffs, they have to come to court with clean hands. You are complaining that they damaged your motorhome. Yeah, they did. That was on some kids that was, it. At, Hey, you know, I'm trying to be nice to you and explain it to you for the. And I said to you, if you come into court and yes. are asking the court's assistance mm -hmm. to help you, yes, because someone has done something wrong to you, you have to come to court with clean hands. That's what it's called, the doctrine of clean hands. When people don't pay rent and expect to live on other people's property mm, without yeah. paying rent. It's like stealing their property. They said that they, look, they gave us a three day uh, an eviction, Your right? The case is dismissed. It's over. Yeah, you know what? Guess what? You're burnt. Man, you're burnt. Bodies are excused. You may step out. This man drove his forklift into a trailer with my girlfriend in I it and her, my, oh, almost yeah. killed her. The trailer has holes in it, okay? Mark does it for a living. He takes RVs and he actually strips outside and recycles it. I think that he probably was trying to take his RV apart to get some money. I feel like we've been really wrong here. Background checks. Lesson learned. Mr. Paskey, Mr. Welch was your former boyfriend, and according to your complaint, he owes you some money from a 2010 accident that he had with your car. 
In addition to that, he did some damage to the walls in your apartment that you're responsible for and broke some of your property. He wanted that is to compensate you for that. Mr. Welch said that you did, in fact, have an argument, but there was no assault. Mr. Welch says that he did, in fact, have an accident with your car in 2010, but he gave you $900 towards the repairs on the car, and he feels as if he's more than compensated you for that. So let's start with the car first. That accident was in 2010. Clearly, it was your fault because you paid for it. And the damage to your car, which according to you was just a bumper that was damaged on your car. That is correct. And he's given you $900. What else do you think he owes you for? The total damage to the other party was a total of $1,800. That would have been covered under your liability. He insurance. didn't have insurance at the time, Your Honor. The only insurance I had was through my uh, bank with the loan I held. I didn't have insurance for the car at the time in the state, it wasn't necessary. Of course, you have to have liability insurance on a car. You don't have to have collision, but you have to have liability, which means that if you hit somebody else and your car is damaged, they're not going to pay for your car, but they would pay for the other person's car. Did you let the insurance lapse? No, ma'am. Well, I don't understand that. Then why wouldn't it cover the other car? On the police report here, they have the lien holder down with the um, insurance on here. It was not covered under the bank's insurance. Let me take a look at this report that you have. Maybe I'm not understanding something. Am I correct, Officer Bird? In most jurisdictions, you are required to have, if you drive a car, liability insurance in the event you cause an accident and another car is damaged or another person is damaged. Right. You don't have to have collision insurance, which means that if you damage your car, you're on your own. You're on your own. Right? Right. Okay. So you would have to have insurance. Sure. It was under the bank again. Not under the, under the bank. It's your car. Sure. I mean, true. Of course it's true. I do have receipts that the money I paid out of pocket for that money order receipts. I don't care receipts. whether you paid out of pocket for it, sir. The question is, if you didn't have appropriate insurance, that's your problem. I don't see anything here about insurance. On the front page there, Baraboo National. You didn't have insurance. Next. <laughs> What's next? I'm also suing for the damage to my cell phone and the laptop and the hole oh, in my okay. wall, Your Honor. Great. Cell phone. Tell me about it. I was in an altercation with Welch. He asked for money to buy a prescription from the hospital. I did not give him money for that. He then went and kicked me in the head three times, Your Honor. Also damaged my cell phone. Would you tell me about the cell phone? Yes, I said, tell me about the cell phone. That's when he kicked the cell phone out of my hand and it damaged the screen on my cell phone here. I'd like to see it. Your Honor, he had threw that phone at me when I had left the house that morning. I have the original please statement from that morning. I'd like to see it. It talks about... Uh, Just a second, I can read. So what you're telling me is he threw the cell phone at you. Yeah. That is correct, Your Honor. Hmm? That is not correct, Your Honor. I'm just going to read this. Why did you give this to me? Where does it say he threw the cell phone? No, it, it's just a police report from that morning. And it oh, well, says, what'd you give it to me for? It says he spoke to the police that day. Uh, Immediately after, he told the police that you would kick the cell phone out of his hand. The police observed the broken cell phone. He also complained these about are injuries. The charges from that day, and they were all dismissed. I don't care. One of them was the criminal damage to property regarding the cell phone. Because you came to civil court. Did you have a trial? I was legally charged. Did you have a trial? No, I did not have a trial. And you had a prior assault case? Yes. yes so what'd you let him back in the house for? Um, he was, uh, said he was going to go to therapy, okay. which he did, okay. and uh, I was okay. with... I, I got the answer. Oh, well, on May 22nd, you actually told him at that point that he had thrown the phone at you and denied that any physical altercation. Yeah. It also says that the police officer had observed the side of his face that he alleged that I kicked him on and saw no injury. That's correct. There was no physical marks on my face, but it's three times. Did you go to the doctor? No, ma'am. Okay, let's go on to something else. We now have the car that you're not getting any money for because he gave you $900. I'm confused about the phone. Yes, ma'am. The only thing that I'm not confused about is when somebody has behaved in a violent manner towards you and they're out on bond on an assault case, you don't let them move back into the house. Okay, what's next? Condition. You want to tell me about the computer? The computer was also damaged in the first incident there. You can see on the screen here, he broke it by punching it. Well, you don't even mention the computer no, when you spoke to the police. Yes, ma'am. Why? Because I didn't notice it at the time. He punched it. That was 6 o'clock in the morning when this took place, and Mr. I never Welch, touched his Mr. Welch, laptop. what kind of prescription medication do you take? Um, at that time, it no, was... No, not at that time. Today. Nothing. What about yesterday? Nothing. Really? Really. Really? Really. I like to drink, but... Mr. Welch, if what you're telling me is, because you're gathering from my silence, that I don't believe that you are in 
tight control of what's going on with your mind. And if it's not drugs, prescription or otherwise, and if what you're telling me is that it's alcohol, it's beginning to fry your brain. Okay. I hear it. Get yourself some help. You're 24 years old. Okay. That's your opinion. Sadly, my opinion's the only one that counts here. Yeah, it is. But you don't you don't know me, so you you really can't judge me. I'm not judging you. Well, you're a judge, so you can judge me. But um, <laughs> you know, it, I, I do have a past of drug abuse, but I was on probation for five years, and I passed successfully, and I'm doing fine to date. Well, it was in May of 2012 that you weren't doing so fine. That prescription was a prescription for painkillers, for broken fingers. It's over. Done. Finished. I don't know whether he kicked the phone or you threw the phone. You don't mention that in your police report. You have no injuries as a result of any assault. Police officers saw no bruising on your body, sought no medical assistance. At best, it was an attempted assault, if in fact he did put his hands on you. Now, have you seen him since all this started? No, ma'am. Is that right? There was one time that I had tried to stop by the house after the no contact had been dropped to gather my belongings. Since February of 2012, all my belongings are at his residence that I can't even go near. And I've been trying to get my belongings. I've been working with the captain of the Juneau County Sheriff's Department trying to get my belongings, and he's been uncooperative with that. Do you have any of his property in your house? I have a bag of clothes, Your Honor. Why don't you tell him where you want him to send the clothes? He can drop them off at my mom's house or mail them to my mother's house. Do you know where his mother lives? Yes, ma'am. Why don't you just drop them off? There's also quite a bit of furniture that is there, and 75% of the belongings in that home are mine. Can't help you, sir. I don't have a counterclaim. And perhaps one of the reasons that he's not forthcoming with doing that is because he feels annoyed over the rest of the stuff. Uh, you want to get into the damage to the apartment? Yes, Your Honor. Go. That would happen back in May. Same After incident? The, yes, ma'am. Same time? Yes, ma'am. I have ahead. a couple photos, Your Honor, from the hole that he punched in my wall. Is this a rental that you live in? No, ma'am. What is it? It's a mobile home that I purchased. We purchased it together, but I was on probation at the time and put it in his name, so... When you say you purchased it together, what does that mean? We paid $500 a week for 10 weeks for $5,000. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. And you both participated for the mobile home? For the original purchase, yes, Your Honor. Goodbye. Why these are excuses, you may step out. There was a couple knives uh, stabbed into the wall there when I got home from work. Uh, he told me that some ghosts threw them at the wall. I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know what he's alleging with that. Then a couple days later, he sobered up and told me that he put him there, but he didn't recollect why. Well, yeah, I do like drinking. I still do today, so. You know, he's been addic addicted to drugs for quite a long time now, and his family's not there to support him, and. I try to make me look bad. I tried to stand there by his side, but nothing came of it, so. And now, the next case. All parties in a matter of Mays versus Lewis. Step forward. Doris Mays is suing the mother of her granddaughter's schoolmate, Marcy Lewis, for the cost to replace the rear window of her car. Miss Mays, how is this young lady related to you? My granddaughter. And this is your daughter? Yes, ma'am. Miss Mays, it is your claim that this young lady broke your car window with a rock. Yes. And you want her mom to finish paying for it? Yes. You already gave her some money? Yes, ma'am. How much? 175 total. 175 dollars. Yes. Tell me when this happened, Miss Mays. This happened on June 9th, 2012. Where did it happen? At Farmington Fifth and Middle School. You were picking up your granddaughter. Yes. And where were you? I was at recess. Were you hanging out with this young lady? Yes. Did you see your grandmother's car? Yes. Did you see what happened to her car? Yes. Would you tell me what happened to her car? Well, she was trying to get her attention, and she threw a rock in. It made a big boom. So you were calling your grandmother? Yes. Go over to the car. Our school is fenced in. School is fenced, so your grandmother was waiting outside for when you were released? Yes. When Tamiya threw the rock, did you see where it landed? No. So you didn't see the glass break? No, I was hanging out with my other friends. I had walked away. Well, if you walked away, how could you see her throw the rock? No, I knew that she were throwing rocks. She was throwing rocks? Yes. But you didn't see her throw the rock at your grandmother's car? No. What window broke on your car? The back window. All right, Tamia, tell me what happened. We was at recess, and um, she was trying to get her grandma's attention, and so she started throwing rocks. She was like, can you help me? I was, I'm like, get her grandma's attention. I was like, why? And she was like, because I just need to get it. I was like, no, okay. I don't hear you. You're talking too quietly, and you're talking too fast. 
So she was throwing rocks. Yeah, she asked me, can I help her? So I had picked up a small, smallest rock I could find, and I threw it at the rock, and when the car broke, we both threw a rock at the same time. I don't know who threw the rock, if it was mine or hers. <laughs> even your mother doesn't believe that. I just want you to know that. I'm really good at reading eyes, and even your mother doesn't buy that. Were you throwing rocks? No, ma'am. Okay, so what did you do? You went into the school? Yes, I got out of my car and looked around and checked at the back of my car and saw the window was all shattered out. So I asked who did it, and she admitted that she did it. What did she say? I asked who broke the window, and she said she broke the window. She said she was sorry, and I told her to meet me in the principal's office. Perfect. Now, Miss Lewis says that she paid you $175 for the window. Yes, I received some money just last Tuesday, a money order in this envelope for $50. And that made a total of uh, 175 And do you have a bill for the back window? Did yes, you have I it fixed? Right May I see it, please, Bert? Thank you. Thank you. So she doesn't owe you very much at all. No. She paid 175 so she owes you $30. No, 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 no. This was $206.88 is what you gave me. Okay, I wrote it all down. Oh, no, she paid me $125. i am sorry. Do you have any proof of what Yes, I do. Me? I'd like to see it. Plus the 50 that her daddy sent. No, her dad, your dad never, her dad never no, sent no. me No, no, listen to me. I only see the proof of what you have. If you have something that her father sent, then I'll look at that. If you have no proof, then I have to accept what she says. Tell me how much I have you have. One twenty-five here, ma'am. One twenty-five. Okay. I don't think she realized what was going to happen. I certainly don't think she intended to shatter your car window, right? Okay. Don't fib. Not a good thing. Charge for the plaintiff in the amount of eighty-one dollars. Thank you. What is that excuse me? Step out. Thing was, her granddaughter's been bullying my child for the whole year. Well, my granddaughter says she's the bully. She didn't want to go to school because she was scared of her. She used to cry not to go to school. And they've been throwing rocks together for each other. Because she had to face this little girl every day. Who knows who, who throws what? I teach her, tell the truth. Take responsibility for your actions. It could have been anybody. Yes, it's my responsibility. That's that. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Manikowski versus Price. Step forward. 25-year-old Diana Manikowski is suing her former friend, Sean Price, for unpaid rent. Ms. Manikowski, how do you know the defendant? Uh, he's a former close friend. From where? I met his brother a few years back, and his brother introduced him to me, and we've been friends ever since, just mutual friends. How long? Mm -mm, five years. Did you ever date? Each other, I mean. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, never. It is your claim that he owes you money for rent. Yes, sir. And Mr. Price said that wasn't the deal. Yeah. So, Mr. Price, how old are you, sir? 31, Your Honor. What do you do to support yourself? Currently, right now, I, I don't really have any way to support myself. I'm going to be starting a job here on the 8th. When was the last time you worked? Probably about a year ago. So, how have you been supporting yourself? Diana's taken me in and has been helping me out there. For how long? For six months now. Prior to that, sir, you still weren't working. Who was taking care of you six months before that? Prior to that, I was staying with her mother and as her caretaker and... That was my payment, was if I take care of her mother, they would provide room, board, food, and all that. Your mother was ill? Yes, my mother's disabled. Mr. Price was taking care of her and living in? Yes. For how long? A year, year and a half. And he did that in exchange for room and board? Yes. Is your mother still alive? Yes. Who's taking care of her now? My cousin. Why isn't Mr. Price taking care of her? My mom has a very testy temper, and he just said some things that she wasn't happy with and told him, I don't want you here anymore. Get out. And is that when you took him in? Yes, Your Honor. So you knew at the time you took him in, you knew he had no job? Yes. We had made an agreement that as soon as he found a job to begin paying me $200 a month, and that never happened. And he doesn't owe you any money because that was your contract. The contract was that he could live with you rent-free until he started to work. And when he started to work, he had to start to pay you. And if he didn't start to work the six months that he lived with you, then you were really giving him a gift. Where are you living now, sir? I'm staying with my roommate here. With your roommate? Well, friend. And who's paying that for you? Uh, she is. Nice. <laughs> Something here that's invisible to me, but I suppose so everybody else sees it. <laughs> Sounds like you were a nice lady. But oh, you understand what I said to you? Yes. This is a court. Court deals with contracts. Your contract was with him was something that neither of you dispute. But once he didn't get a job, I was just like, figure out something. I was feeding him. I was clothing him. He was sleeping on my couch. And it, it, that stacks up after a while. And I told him, I'm like, look, we got to do something. And, and so I told him in November, because my grandma became ill. Um, 
sorry, she's gone now. She died the day before Thanksgiving this past year. Um, and I told him that he had until the end of the year because there were some family finances that I had to take care of. And you couldn't support him anymore. Yeah, I could no longer take yeah, care of him. Yeah, she is. Yes. And she's got a preview. Got a preview? Yes, Your Honor. He must be something really special. <laughs> Look like a nice lady. If you start to work and she helped you, it would be the right thing for you to help her. And you're right. Yeah, I know you know. Goodbye. What is that to you? may step out. I feel that, you know, she's not wrong, really. I mean, I did make the agreement to help pay her. I mean, I did take care of it for six months. And once I got a job and I was unable to. I mean, I fed him and took care of him. And they've helped me and they took care of me at the time I needed it the most. With my grandmother dying, it's just, it's just really hard now. And then now I feel betrayed, so to speak, that, you know. I'm not helping anybody ever again, because obviously. It was all just something for the money. No matter how good you do, you're never going to win. Am I correct from reading your complaint that you and the defendant live in the same housing complex? We did, yes, ma'am. Did? Yes. Until when? I moved out in 2011. Are you still there? No, I moved out a few months later. And you work at an Avis car rental? Yes, ma'am. When did the defendant call you about the possibility of renting a car? In July of 2012. Had you kept in touch with him from the time you moved out in 2011? Yeah, we would text or call every now and then, see how each other were doing. Did you see him? A couple times, yes. How did you see him? He would come over and hang out every now and then. Come over, hang out at your house? Yeah. Did you date? No. Is that correct? No, it's not. What's not correct? I never went over and hung out with her at her house. Between 2011, when you moved out, and July of 2012, is what you're telling me, Mr. Holcomb, you didn't physically see the plaintiff? No. Then, Mr. Holcomb, I'd like you to tell me what brought you to her in July of 2012? Well, my car had broke down. And no, no, don't was, look over there. My roommate was taking me back and forth to work. And I remember her saying that uh, she owned the Avis. She was the owner of the Avis car rental place. So I asked her, I said, you have, is there any way you could uh, hook me up with a car? And she said, yeah, she could do it for $28 a day. And then she said, I might be able to do it better. Let me figure something out. Then she calls me back the next day and lets me know that, yeah, she could do it for $22 a day. That's a pretty great rate, Mr. Holcomb. Yeah, it is. Now, what did you need a car for? My car broke down, and I couldn't get back and forth to work and school. So, she was doing you a favor. Did you take your car in to be fixed? Yes, my car got picked up, towed in, and then they were fixing towed it. Towed in from where? It broke down at a Walmart, actually. And did you have it towed to a garage? Yes. Mr. On what date did you go in to pick up the car at Avis for this wonderful bargain rate of $22 a day? I believe it was the 24th. Of July? Yes, of July. Now, when you went in there, did you go in with anything other than a smile? No, just me and my roommate and a smile. Money. Oh, I asked her what I needed. She said I needed a credit card. Well, I was in a hurry because my roommate had to go to work, so he was going to go drop me off. And before I get there, I grab the wrong card. I get there and I give her the card, and she says she can use it. Grab the wrong card? Yes. How do you grab the wrong card? Because I have my credit card, my debit card in my drawer, and I just grabbed it because they're the same color, the green. So I grabbed the prepaid card, and I took it to her. Why and she don't said you she just keep them all in a wallet? I don't like carrying wallets. Fine. So you get there, and you had this prepaid debit card which Avis doesn't accept. So Miss Pate said, all right, I'll put it on my credit card, your car, and then you can pay me back. Basically. Uh, uh, basically. Well, I, that's why I'm a very basic girl. Well, Look first, at this. I'm a first. very basic person. <laughs> basically, you tried to rent the car with the card that you brought, which was the wrong card because they were both the same color green. I'm just trying to get exactly. this together. So she said she was being a nice person. She said, you know what? I know you need the car because now your friend left, right? No, so yeah, he hadn't left yet. He offered to use his card. She said, I'll just put it on my card. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Well, actually, you can't tell me that because that's hearsay, but it's interesting. And that would have been easy for you, right? right? You. How old are you? 35. 35 years old. So you say, fine, give me your card. Well, friend he... and your roommate? Yes. Friend and roommate. Somebody that you know, you live with. You hadn't seen her in a year, right? Right. So... You say to your friend, fine, let me use your card because I picked up the wrong green card. Exactly. <laughs> right? And then you took the car and that was on the 24th of July. When did you bring in the right color green card for Miss Pate to substitute her card for your right color green card? She told, no, she no. told me. Listen to me. The answer is on the 25th, the 26th, the 27th, or never. 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 So now... She's on the hook for you, right? Right. So far, do I have the story pretty straight she from what you wrote? a little wrong, but yeah. But is it pretty much what your case is about, except yeah. that then you had an accident with the car and caused a little damage to the car. Yes. So now Miss Pate is on the hook for $1,444.44.
because you kept the car for how long before you had the accident? A month. One month. Well, I've had that car for a week, brought it back. The original, I rented a Cherokee. Just a minute. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I did actually read that in the complaint. That first you picked a Jeep Cherokee. Liberty. Lib whatever. <laughs> but you found it was using too much gas. Yes. So you came back in. And when you came back in, did you bring the right color green card? No, I had color. No, no. No. You could have brought the right color green card. Say, well, this car is too much gas. But now that I'm here and I remembered the right color green card, let's make all well, the paperwork right. You could have done that, right? You chose not to. Because of 35 it. years old. Yes. With a dimple. Doesn't do it for me. <laughs> now, when you were finished with the car and after you had the accident, where did you leave it? Well, I was, uh, I was driving. I pulled over where to the gas station. Where did you leave it? At Avis. Avis. Different location. Her Avis? No, hers was closed. This is the airport Avis. The only one that was open at the time. At the air were you going somewhere? No. So you just dropped it off there. On what date? Honestly, I don't know the date. On what date did he just The 31st leave? of August. And when did you call her, Mr. Holcomb, to tell her that you had dropped it off at the Avis at the airport? I called her as soon as I left Avis at like 4.30 in the morning because they took two hours to pick me up. You left the car there at 4.30 in the morning? Why was that? When I left work, that's when I got in the accident. They popped the tires. Avis can't pick it up. They took two hours to get there, and they picked me up, took me to Avis also. And I called her to let her know what was going on. And she seemed like kind of, I guess, paranoid a little bit because I took it to that Avis and I was supposed to bring it back to hers because no one was supposed to know that I guess the car was in her name. Because when she did do that, she told me, don't let anyone find out because she would get in trouble. Well, in whose name was the car? It was on my card, but in his name. I'd like to see that contract. And you were the one who signed off on this contract, right? Yes. And it is in your name. Yes, ma'am. Michael Holcomb. And that time you said you were going to keep the car for a week. You were going to return it on July 30th. That's what this says here that you signed. Well, you kept it till August 31st. Well, I returned that one. And then I got another one. And she told me that she was going to take care of it. That's why I didn't ever bring it. Well, just a second. But you said it. you were going to keep a rental car for one week. Correct. Why did you end up keeping it for over a month? Because the place where I took my, my truck, they told me that my engine was blown. I was going to get it either rebuilt or buy another engine. So it was going to take a longer, longer period of time to fix. Now, when for the first time after, let's say, August 1st, did Miss Pate call you and say, where's the car? No. Did she ever call you? No. Did you ever try to call him? Yes, ma'am. How many times did you try to call him, Miss Pate? On every return date. He kept extending and telling me, well, I'll have it back this day or I'll have money this day to put down on the card because you can make cash payments on it. And How many times did you speak to him between, say, the 30th of July and the 31st of August? More than you can count on two hands. Did you actually speak to him? Yes. And he had excuses? Yes. Did he ever find the right color green card? No. Is there anything you want to say to me, Mr. Holcomb? I had three different cars, so every time I brought the car in, if I owed anything, she would ask me for the money. What do you mean if you owed anything? How much did you pay? I didn't pay anything. Wait, just a second. How much did you pay? If you say Zero. you didn't owe anything, then you must have paid it because you were driving the car. Yes. I mean, she's not related to you. According to you, you never saw her between 2011 and 2012. She wasn't your girlfriend. You weren't in a relationship. None of those things, right? So you had a car, and what happens when you rent a car from a car dealership? You pay for it. So I'm waiting for the payment. I didn't pay anything. I was under the impression when she put on her car, she told me that she was going to take care of it. Just don't tell anybody. She was going to take care of it? That's what she said in her own words. That's why I thought I wasn't being charged each time I brought a car back. So you weren't being charged. So you were getting the car for free? Yes. Even though you signed this contract that you were going to pay for it? Yes. So, Mr. Holcomb, I'm going to give you a little bit of background that maybe some people don't know who have been watching this television program now for over 17 years. So I'm going to give you a little insight. Before I come to work, you folks have signed a complaint that you signed a sworn complaint, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you sign an answer that says that what you're telling me is the truth. So I have a short complaint and an answer that you signed. This is what it looks like, right? That's yes. your signature there? Yes, ma'am. And that would be your signature there, right? Yes. And one of the things that they do is they send me a copy a couple of days before of your complaint and answer. So I get to read them. And then what I do is make notes. So let me read the note that I wrote on this case. Would you be interested in hearing that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. And later today, it goes for credit card charges and for wrecking a rental car. 
I'm going to read it to you. This says that we're friends and you work at Avis. He rented a car. You put it on your card. He didn't pay and had an accident. He's an idiot. <laughs> now, I say that to you because I very rarely prejudge these things. But I read your answer and your answer was so dumb and made no sense and had no defense that I say to myself, why would somebody who has no defense, who has nothing to say, expose themselves to God here? <laughs> so I wrote, he's an idiot. And you're an idiot who owes a $1,444.44. Goodbye. Thank you. Bodies are excused. You may step out. She told me she was going to do me a favor and and put it on her card. I have pages of text messages from him. I'll pay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. And even turned my friend's card down and told me not to go back and get my card. And I never met a friend with a card. She's the owner of the place. I thought she could do, do me a favor as she said she was going to do. Not to help out a friend. I'm an idiot. With it. And now the next case. All parties in the meadow. Gonzalez versus Reyes. Step forward. Lizette Gonzalez is suing her ex-husband, Manuel Reyes, for his share of missed mortgage payments on a house they co-owned. Ms. Gonzalez, when were you and Mr. Reyes divorced? Um, March of 2011. When had you married? In what year? September 2004. Do you have children? No, ma'am. When did you purchase the house that's the subject of this case? Uh, September 2006. How much did you pay for it? 675. And how much was the mortgage? I don't remember exactly how much it was. 2000. No, what was the total oh, aggregate what we amount owed. of the I'm mortgage? I'm so sorry. 555, I believe. How much was the mortgage that you took out? About 550. That would mean that you put down $125,000 in cash in the house. Is that correct? Correct. That's about right. Okay. And the two of you were working? Yes. Yes. Great. Now, you bought the house in 2006 and 2008. The market crashed. That would be true. That would be very true. <laughs> and have you had the house appraised currently? No. Well, that's a big problem for you I, both. I got it, not in a formal appraisal, but it was when I was trying to get it short sale. They were going to list it for 400. 400. So less than your mortgage. Correct. Correct. So you have negative value in this house. That's correct. Okay. So this is what I see that this case is about. Your judgment to divorce, according to both of you, and I will look at it, says that you can live in the house as long as you pay the mortgage. That's what it said. Is that right? It said until the home was sold. Let me see what it says. Are you equivocating? Well, we don't equivocate. Just show me what it says. You have other real property? Yes, ma'am. What other real property? I have a townhome that I bought before we were married. Condominium 58? Yes. Great. This judgment of divorce was signed on January 26, 2011. And it said that you can live there until the house is sold and you have all the mortgage, et cetera, on the house. Correct. That Mr. Reyes gives his interest to the property to you until the house is sold. When the house is sold, proceeds at the time of the sale shall be equally divided amongst the parties. Correct. That's what it says. Correct. But there is a problem in... I Listen to me. I know there was a problem. The problem is she didn't stay living in the house. Who was this? This is my current husband. Because she moved out and she went to live with her husband. You went there and found that she was no longer living in the house. You changed the, no, at some point, you changed the locks at some point. You changed the locks and changed the whole agreement. No, no, that's not what happened. What the two of you did was not live up to the terms of this agreement. Um, Clearly. Yeah. Is that right? Well, w just a second. Right? Correct. It is correct. Without right. interpretation, The yes. two of you did not live up to the terms of this agreement. Uh, Judge, I did live up to those because I did exactly what the divorce decree states. She was supposed to make the mortgage payments. She intentionally missed the mortgage payments until I found out that they were not being made. What I did is I went and made the mortgage payments on my own. Yes. Okay, that's one. Well, just a second. When you went to make the mortgage payments on your own, did you also do anything with regard to the house? In terms of? In terms of anything, in terms of changing the locks, in terms of moving when the I, when, when I mean, The answer is either yes or no. Yes. Well, then you made mortgage payments that right. she did not make, Correct. but you also changed the locks on the house. The reason was is because I, I was don't not care what the reason was. Right now, there's no value in this house. Correct. That's correct. Well, then what are you both doing here? So if, if I could explain. There's just, I no. this okay. is what I want you to explain. You disregarded what you both agreed to in this judgment of divorce by doing a variety of things. I don't feel like I disregarded well, it. Well, you did. Because the whole idea was that you were supposed to live there, pay the mortgage on the house. When you decided you didn't want, pay attention. Mm -hmm. When you decided you didn't want to live there anymore, you were supposed to put the house up on the market and sell it. 
and divide the proceeds with your former husband. That's what I tried to do, but just he didn't a, allow me to sell just it. Just a second. Then you go back to the court where they issued your judgment to divorce. Did you at any time, very easy to check, did you at any time leave the house for a period of more than one week to live with your current husband? Did you, to listen to me carefully. No, I moved into my town home at one point and rented the home. Well, you can't do that. He was in agreement no, with that. You can't do that. That's not what this says. You can't do it. That's correct. Unless you do it in writing. This is a writing. This is a contract that the two of you had. And I'm not going to listen to. He said I could rent it. He said I could move out and rent it because it was underwater. Right now, there is no equity in this house at all. I agree with that, Your Honor. Well, of course there's no equity in it. The house isn't worth half of what you paid for it. Correct. And you owe more on the mortgage. And what you want is for him to give you $5,000 so allegedly you could bring the mortgage up. What Please. I want is for him to allow me to sell the house. I tried to abide by the divorce agreement that and house? sell the home, and he wouldn't allow me to then short sell the home. Is that what you want? You want an, an order from a court to let you sell the house? Is that what you want? Well, no. Is that what you want? I would love that. Go back and say to the judge, please, would you give me an order allowing me to sell the house because I want to do that and he refuses to let me sell the house. I, but I'm not giving you $5,000. I'm gi not giving you $5,000. You changed this. Well, Your Honor, the reason I had to was because I wasn't aware of what the previous tenants had done to the property on the inside. I can't help you. You changed this. And right now, your house isn't worth anything. You're not out anything. What you will both be out is the $125,000 that you put in. And, and that's exactly house. what I'm working with with the bank on now to modify the mortgage, to bring the mortgage down. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's the reason why I made those mortgage payments myself. Out Great. Of my own. So that's before you start story working with years. anybody, I would go back to the Supreme Court. You have a very detailed judgment of divorce that has several parcels of property. And I would go back and I would say, Judge, Correct. I want the house. Correct. I'll make the mortgage payments Correct. on the house. I will sell the house, and I'll give her half the profit. Exactly, and that's... I can't do that for you. Correct. Great. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Step out. He's looking to scam and make money. That's what, he, that's what he's been doing for the last, you know, six years. It's not offensive. It is uh, her behavior, her personality. He's just all about trying to make an easy, mon easy money. You know, she did not make the mortgage payments intentionally on the property. I plan to go to Dakota Family Court and, and get it resolved. To make sure she understands that... She can't bully people into doing what she wants to do. If they allow me to get off of the loan so that I'm no longer responsible, I'm happy to do that. Ma'am, have a seat. Mr. Kuzar, yes, with whom were you living last October when you were arrested? When I was arrested, I was living with a friend of the family, Your Honor. Name? Uh, Vicky. Now, when you were living with Vicky, what kind of car did you have? I had a 2013 Sonata, 2012 Hyundai Sonata. Were you making payments on that car? Yes, I was, ma'am. What happened to that car? My grandmother was... Uh, her name was on the car, and I uh, got a little bit of trouble, and she decided that the car should go to my uncle and not to me. What kind of little bit of trouble did you get into? Um, on my birthday, October 11th, I got arrested for driving on the suspended on the way home from work. Well, you weren't arrested for driving with a suspended license. You were pulled over for something else. Oh, I was pulled over for speeding, Your Honor. And why was your license suspended? Too many speeding tickets and an unpaid ticket in uh, Wisconsin. So what did you do when you were arrested? Uh, when I was arrested, I... Jail and uh, listen to me, you oh. got taken to the uh, there's no such word as took. Oh, sorry, I was taken to the county jail, your honor. And uh, from there, I uh, got a bond of $3,500. How did you get that bond? I went to bond court the following morning. So then, what did you do? So then, I uh, tried to get a hold of a few people. I don't have very many mom numbers memorized because of smartphones nowadays, you don't really type the number no more. So, the only number anymore. that, I, huh? Anymore, anymore. The only number that I Fortunately, had memorized was my mother's phone number, so I had contacted her. Oh, that was turned out to be a very lucky number for you to yes, remember. Yes, it was. <laughs> and right? then after I contacted her, after Your Honor, you contacted I, your mother, you got bailed out. Well, I contacted her to get a hold of my girlfriend because I had a party waiting for me the night I got arrested. So I had a like, bunch of people probably calling my phone, wondering where I was at and what happened. So. You didn't remember your girlfriend's number? No, I. Uh, no, Your Honor, I didn't. I just. But you remembered your mother's number? Yes. So your mother bailed you out? Yes. And how much was that bail? $1,000. Okay. And then you needed a lawyer? Yes, Your Honor. What kind of a discussion did you have with your mother about getting yourself a lawyer? We didn't have any discussion about getting a lawyer. I was going to go out to pub the state, the public defender, the one I was provided. She had got a lawyer on her own accord. I didn't even know I had a lawyer until he showed up at the county jail and got the bond reduction court date pushed up. Okay. Where did you get this lawyer from? A friend of mine referred 
me to him because Brian's bond hearing was scheduled for three weeks after the day he was arrested. He called me petrified that he was going to lose his job. So I said, the only way we're going to be able to get your bond hearing pushed up is if we get an attorney for you. I do not have the funds to help you with this. If I help you with this, you have to pay me back. Now listen to me. That's not what you said to him then. That is what no, I said. No, don't believe him. I believe he said to you, I'm going to lose my job if I'm going to sit in jail for three weeks. Is there any way you can help me? And I believe you said the only way we can do it is if we get the... Have you ever been arrested? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's an answer I actually didn't expect. Huh? So you know about Bond? It was 30 years ago. That was a long time ago, 30, yeah. not in 30 years. I, I, it was an I-bond. I do understand the sophisticated concept of you would need a lawyer to go in and advance the date for the bond hearing. And public defender is not going to do that for you. Public defender will see you when three weeks down the pike, you'll be assigned a public defender and you'll have a lawyer. So I can understand you saying to your mother, I have a job. Do you still have the same job? Yes, I do, Your Honor. I have a job, and if I'm going to sit in jail, I'm going to lose my job. Is there any way that you can help me? And I believe that your mother went and got you a lawyer so that she could get your bond hearing moved up. That's what happened. But don't give me a lot of baloney about, I said to him, I don't have any money, and you're going to, if I get this for you and do this for you, you're going to have to pay me back. Because that didn't happen. Then, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not entitled to your money. But don't make up stories, because that's not a good thing. So, got the lawyer, and you got bonded out. Yes, ma'am. And how much was the lawyer? $500. And then, once he got out of jail, according to you, you told him that he could come and live in your house rent-free with the girlfriend. So far, correct? Yes, ma'am. And, at this point, the family member who decided to give the car to somebody else left you without wheels yes, to get to work. Yes, ma'am. And you needed wheels to get to work. Yes, ma'am. So tell me what you did to get the wheels to get to work. Well, uh... Am I, uh... No, look, don't look down there. Just look right here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ah, just... you're still doing it again. I, I got the car uh, for me as a birthday present. No, no. So... What did you do about not having a car? We got out. We went to her house. Um, no, don't uh, look over there. Her ex-husband is a mechanic, so she uh, has deals on cars and has cars. No, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not hearing anything about you. I didn't do anything but go with her because she had a car that she had picked out with her ex-husband. So I went with her and... You didn't say anything. You're just standing there mute during this whole thing. Not, Mom, I need a car to get to work? Well, yeah, no. That's what we're getting at. Yeah, because we were talking about, you know, that she would... If I was asking her if she would drive me, and it was kind of far. It's about an hour drive. So then she said that probably isn't going to work. We're going to have to get you a car. So we talked briefly about it, and she said her ex-husband had a car that he was selling at the, where he works. And uh, we went up there that and day. And you looked at it. Did you test drive it? Uh, no, I didn't test drive it. I just gave her a look over, and I, her ex-husband and me are pretty close, so I trusted his word. He says it's a good car. It's a good car. And how much was the car? 3500 Now we get to the point where you're going to tell me about the conversation that you had with your son, who is a work on cross, who is a working man, when you said that he and the girlfriend, that would be you, could live in your house rent-free as long as he paid you back $500 a month towards the lawyer, the bond, and the car. I want you to tell me where you were when that discussion took place. I was sitting at the kitchen table on the telephone with him when he pleaded with me for the money and to help him. What money? To get him out of jail, to get him out of trouble, and... You know, he begged me not to return the Hyundai Sonata. He wanted me to hide that from my mother because my mother's name was on it. He did not tell the truth. He was behind on his car payments. I know that's besides the point. No, of course. Okay. There's a reason that the call was taken back. I, it's a hustle. Well, I had a conversation with my son, and I told him, Brian, I do not have the means to do this. I was just recently laid off. I do not have money. This is my entire nest egg that I am giving you, so loaning you. So... In lieu of rent, and because I believe that you are going to become a better person and will go to work, I will allow you and your friend Nancy to live in my home under the following terms. A, you give me $500 per month to pay back all debt related to your arrest, bond, lawyer, and reciprocal costs, not including me hacking a diamond ring 
to give him to come up with all the cash I had to put together in over a 36 hour period to get him out of jail. Anyway, and then the other rules were don't smoke pot in my house, abide by the terms of your bond. The terms of his bond were that he was on a, t a house arrest. It was an honorary house arrest. He was to go to work and come home. No alcoholic beverages, no marijuana. I said, Were they I, letting him drive? He had a suspended license? No, he was using his, his uh, friend, Nancy, to drive him. Were you driving? Yeah. But All the I time? did. Yeah. But I did see him, and other witnesses saw him driving on the suspended license while he was on this bond. He's a hustler. So anyway, so he promised. He begged, pleaded, and borrowed, and he promised me he was going to pay me back every penny, including the money that I put on his calling card, so that he could talk to his girlfriend. She was girlfriend. With me. Listen to me very carefully. The last thing you want to do is lie to me. You understand? Yes. Are you living with him now? Yes. Where? Apartment. Do you work? No. What do you do? Go to school. Does he work? Yes. Did you ever hear your boyfriend say you're not going to get a penny? No. What did he say? Well, he didn't owe her any money. I didn't ask you that. That's for me to decide. I asked you a question. Did you ever hear him say, in effect, you're not going to get a penny? No, ma'am. Sit. Stand. Just want to know whether to believe you or not. Did he ever drive the car on a suspended license? No, ma'am. Now I know not to believe you. Now you can sit down. <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. For Giorgio says her son, Brian Kusar, owes for two separate loans. Brian claims his mom gave him the money on her own accord. You want to say anything to me? Honestly, yeah. You're calling my girlfriend no, a liar. She's what? a liar. Oh, yeah, she is. No, she's not. Yes, Why would I risk another felony Absolutely. driving around, Your Honor? It makes Absolutely. no sense. Absolutely. And you're also calling me a hustler. I don't really appreciate that. I'm not a hustler. You did. So I, don't, I, I work every day. I work 60 hours a week. I'm not a hustler. Well, then why didn't you so, make your car payment? My car payments were on time. You're listening to the real liar over here, Your Honor. No, so. no, 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 no. Why would your grandmother, who gave you the car... She didn't give me the car, Your Honor. I lost six grand on that car. So <laughs> there's no... Name, if anybody got hustled, I got name, hustled. And whose name is the loan? The loan was in mine and my grandmother's name. There's two names on the car. We agreed to give it no, to no, my No, no, no. I didn't ask you Because I no longer had a license. I, I asked drive. you... I asked you whose name was the loan, not the title to the car. The loan. The loan would be in my grandmother's name. That's what I'm talking about. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000. That's all. Thank you. I just like, excuse you, may step out. Totally disappointed. She believed the wrong person. I'm very grateful. And I'm actually kind of pissed off. She called me a hustler and called my girlfriend a liar on live TV. It's one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. I love my son, and I mean him no harm. But I also think that he is me and needs to learn to be accountable for his actions. She's suing me for lies. I wish him no harm. I love him. He is my son. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter, Faulkner versus Duran. Step forward. Jeanette Faulkner is suing her grandchild's maternal grandmother, Kathy Duran, for half the cost of a crib, mattress, and bedding. How old is your son? My son is 19. How old is your daughter? She is 19. And how old is this, this child they made together? Three months. Great. And you're supposed to be the mature ones, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. <laughs> so this is what your lawsuit is about. You claim that the defendant, whose daughter had a baby, and who she supported, because the daughter lives with her, along with your grandchild, that she said, if you bought the crib, you actually called her and said, would you go halfies with me on the crib? According to you, she said, yes, she would go half with you on the crib as long as it wasn't more than $300. You bought the crib, you want the money. Yes, ma'am. Doesn't it sound ridiculous to you? <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. Faulkner says... Her grandchild's maternal grandmother, Kathy Duran, owes for half the cost of a crib, mattress, and bedding. Kathy is countersuing for half the cost of the baby shower. Is your son working? He is not working at this time. So I assume if he's not working, he's not supporting this child that he made. No, he hasn't, but I have. I have contributed. Well, tell me, every week, every other week, twice a month, once a month, or every once in a while? Whenever they've asked me. That's not I... support. Where's the crib? If they're home. She says, I wasn't even going to mention it, but I made my daughter a baby shower, which I wouldn't have done. <laughs> and plaintiff said that she would actually kick in some money for the baby shower, so I'm countersuing her for the baby shower. Also ridiculous. 
You have 30 seconds to tell me a story. I have other cases to do today that I'm actually more interested in. If you have two 19-year-old children who are dumb enough to make a child, it would seem to me that the last thing the two of you want to do is to fight with each other. The last thing. And I assume your son is not living home? He's living with me. Now he is. Prior to living with you, where was he living? With my sister-in-law and my brother. Is that because he was a problem? No, it isn't. You mean you let your teenager go live with somebody else, and then he lived with her for two and a half months. When he was living with her for two and a half months, did you support him? I gave him whatever he asked me for, whatever he needed. Not him. Her. Rent. Gas. Electric. Food. No, I didn't. I didn't give her anything. He wasn't even living there. Where was he living? He lived at my brother's house, and he lived with me. He did not live at her house. He did not live in the Duran's home. I don't believe you. You want to give me the 30 seconds that I offered you before? Or you just want to say, let's try to be good grandmas. You have a three-month-old baby. Believe me, both these two 19-year-old idiots are going to need all the support that they're going to get. They're going to need time and money, and you're going to want to see your grandchild. Right, and I've seen her eight times since she's been born. Well, you think the that this is going to happen? Born, Do you think she... Her, the grandmother here told me that, don't worry, we'll be able to have you in the birthing room when she's there. I know the doctor. Do you know they both stood there right next to their daughter looking at me when the nurse said there were three people could be in there? Do you think the grandfather stepped down and let the two grandmothers be in there and witness the birth of their first grandchild together? No. Jeanette, just, that was just a, policy just a, of the hospital. Just a second. Just a second. I sit I, in the hallway crying, Judge Judy. That's not my problem. That's your problem. you got to teach your son to keep his pants zipped and your daughter to keep her pants up, and then you don't find yourself in this situation. But as long as you find yourself in this situation, what you're supposed to do, first of all, if you were my mother-in-law, I wouldn't let you in the birthing room. That's just me. I didn't even want my husband in the birthing room. That were those times back then. But if you're my mother-in-law, I for sure don't want you in the birthing room. Maybe it was their daughter's wish that you not be there. I don't know. But the fact that you were upset, who cares? There's only one thing that you have to worry about, and that is you have a three-month-old baby and two idiots for parents. Right. And I'm looking at two grandparents, and I'm getting the sense that, at least on one side, I haven't heard from this one yet, because she's going to tell me about a shower. You want to tell me about a shower? Yes, I do, Your Honor. No, I don't think you do. (laughs) Now, I think the two of you ladies want to go outside and make arrangements for you to have quality time with your grandchild and have both grandparents spend quality time with this child because the child needs all the love and affection they're going to get, and it doesn't start out with a lawsuit over a $300 crib. Oh, there's more. I don't want to hear anymore. You don't want to fuel the fire. I don't. It's no point. This lady is vindictive, Your Honor. This She's very vindictive. You, you want to give me the 30 seconds for the crib, please? My claim is to do with a phone call that was made in November to Kathy Duran asking her, but the children told me that they didn't have a crib. She told me that she'd pay for half of the crib, and I asked her how much she wanted to pay. And I told her, it said, like, $200, $300, and she said that was fine. Well, what was it, 200 or 300 That's a contract. I have to know whether there's a contract. 200 is different from 300 Well, the date of third. the purchase, the date of the purchase, I had called her, and I let her know because we got, we no, got you the... you called her, and? And um, I had found a nice crib. The baby didn't have a dresser or anything, so I got a combination dresser, changing table, and Fine, crib. that's good. That's and, good. Um, and you called her and? To let her know what the price was going to be for the total with the bedding and the mattress. And, and did you speak to her? Her daughter was actually relaying between no. us. Did you speak to her? I did not. That's not a contract. Okay. Contract you make when you speak one person to another, not through an intermediary, unless you have something in writing. I do you do. have anything in writing? I do. I'd like to see it. On November 29th, you wrote to her. Hello, would you like for me to send the money with Chris? I assume that's her son. Is that right? That is correct. She received the mattress and the crib set yesterday. I hope Allison is happy with everything. So how much did you say you would give her? There was never a proposal. There was never an amount. Well, how much were you going to give to Chris? Listen to me, Ms. Duran. I will. You said, is it all right if I give the money to Chris? What were you going to give him? In the money that she was asking for at the time, it was not $300. No, no, no. Just she... That's not what I'm asking you. Okay. What I'm asking you is, you said, would you like for me to send the money yes. with Chris? Mm-hmm. And she said, that's fine. How much were you going to send with Chris? 150 Great. 150 That's she what she gets. 150 in sending any money. Now, you want to give me your 30 seconds on the baby shower? Let's go. Okay. We had a baby shower for my daughter. Great. I never was intending to share the shower with Ms. Faulkner. 
However, she contacted my daughter and said that she would... No, you can't tell me what she said to your daughter. That's hearsay. Okay, so I sent her a message on Facebook letting her know everything that we had planned out for her. And she responded. I even put an amount on there. There was $15 per person. I said, if we split it, it could be $6.50. And she said, oh, it sounds beautiful. That's not a contract. After that, there was no contact at all. That's not a contract. $15, it sounds beautiful, is not a contract. A contract says, I will pay half. Yes. Fine, show me on Facebook. Well, this is the thing, Your Honor. The, um, show me. don't have a message. No, I can't help you then. But I have my witness here that's not I interested. Could share. Not interested. The same Facebook. Page. Not interested. Now, she says 300. I let you put the figure down. Would you like me to send the money with Chris? The money. Not how much would you like me to send with Chris? The money. Mm-hmm. Great. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $150 you count to claims dismissed. That's all. Out. I have there. That's out. Parties are excused. You may step out. We housed him in his in our house when he was kicked out of his aunt's house. It's not true. Never charged him rent. Uh, when we went out, we ate. He did stay there. He was right in there with the rest of my kids. Never charged him a cent. Spend the night there, but he wasn't living there. Unfortunately, when you don't have the same values and you don't have the same... I'm not married. I don't have a husband. She does. And I'm a single parent and I do the best that I can. Do you, for the future of your children, it ends up like this. What well, able to be together, what's going to happen when our, do- our granddaughter has her first birthday party? That's my daughter's decision. I don't have to have communication with that type of family for this type of drama. I mean, I believe we can. I really do. You know, it's up to my daughter whether or not she wants them in her life, not me. Folks, have a seat. I have a claim and a counterclaim. They both involve an incident that allegedly took place sometime in November of 2012 when you, Miss Clay, and you, Mr. Bosco, were living together. Yes. How long did you know each other before you moved in together? For four months. Think that's long enough? No. no. Think that's long enough? No, not really. Did you move in with her or did she no, move in? No, she moved in with me. Where had you been living prior to moving in with him? With my grandmother. Okay. On what date did this incident happen in November? November 11, 2012. You want to tell me your version of the events of November 11, 2012? I wanted to go out with my girlfriends that night, so he had told me, can you please come pick me up at work before you do anything? So I picked him up dropped him off, and I took my girlfriend with me also. When I left, I got phone calls stating, oh, you're going to go to meet another guy. Why are you doing that? And I just went to go out with my girls that night. And we didn't even go to the club. We went to her house to have a couple of drinks. Just tell me what happened with him. He got mad because I went out. I come back to sleep on his couch, and he got mad because I didn't sleep in the bed with him. So he, he gave me an attitude. And I responded back, I don't want to sleep in the bed. I will be going to the Crossroads Shelter in the morning. And that's when all ends started going off. You'll be going to where in the morning? Crossroads Homeless Shelter. Why didn't you just go back to your grandmother? It was 2.30 in the morning. I didn't want to wake her up that spot. I'm not at 2.30 in the morning. Someday. At 6 o'clock in the morning. At 8 o'clock in the morning. What you just said to me was, you said to him, I'm going to the shelter tomorrow morning. Not at 2.30 in the morning, but tomorrow morning. So my question is, why wouldn't you go home to your grandmother's the next morning? I didn't think of it at that time. Okay. So you said, I'm going to the homeless shelter in the morning. And he said... You are not going anywhere. What did I do wrong? And he just wanted to sit down and talk to me. But we got into the argument, and that was still ticking on in my head. So I'm waiting for something to happen that I can decide. (laughs) So... After the argument, he started putting his hands on me. He put his hands on me right here and was tossing me two or three times onto his bed. what you said in your complaint. Why? Do I look like I need your help? That's not what you said in your complaint. When we was arguing, he would not let me out of his man key, which he would call it. So he was blocking his doorway. Listen, try to get your story straight. He would not let me out of his man key. Well, he would not let you out of his man key. When did he put his hands on you? When we got into his bedroom. His bedroom and man cave is connected. And when I was trying to get, that's what he calls it. When I tried to get into his bedroom, that's when he then. What were you trying to get into his bedroom for? So I can leave the house because I felt like his arguing and his yelling was just, he was attacking me in his words. Keep going. So when I went into his bedroom, he started then putting his hands on me. Keep going. Three times onto his bed. And then I sat there and he was yelling at me. So I got up. And he was like, you're not going anywhere. What did I do wrong? He just kept on repeating himself. And I said then, I got really mad. I blacked out and I threw my little fish tanks. Little, it's little glass pieces, the same size as this. There was two fishes that was mine. He brought for me for a gift. I threw it at the bedroom door because I felt like he was going to attack me again, put his hands on me again. 
after I threw both of those fish tanks, his brother and his girlfriend came into the room and was yelling at us, saying, it's 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Why are you guys yelling, arguing at this time? Can we all go to sleep? And after that, I was like, no, forget it. I need to get my things. I need to get out of this house. And I went outside. And that's when I called the police in the ambulance because from what I heard, he cut himself on his foot. I was waiting outside. The police come. Keep going. The police come. I'm living they in Never Neverland me. here. I'm they going to read me. to you what you wrote in your complaint. They ignore me and went inside the house because I called the ambulance for George. After all of this, I went to the shelter and there was still more arguments. Well, what do you want from him? I just want him to give me my cell phone back, my black bo- router box from Sprint that I got with my cell phone plan, and the harassments that he's been giving me in my emails. I'm going to read to you what you wrote in your complaint. Okay? Yes, ma'am. One night in November, I came home, and he was, for some reason, furious. He hit me in the back of the head while I was walking down the hallway away from him. I was terrified and went to the hospital because my head hurt so badly. When I got out of the hospital, I had to move to a domestic abuse shelter because I had nowhere else to go. That bears no relation to the story you just told me. (laughs) None. No tossing on the bed. Nothing. You had to go to the hospital because your head hurt you so badly? He did hit me. Well, I, gave you all, I gave you more time than I give most people to tell me what happened the night of November 11, 2012. Nonsense. Okay, listen to me. Don't laugh. Sorry. You want to tell me your version of what happened in yes, November of 2012? Bird is dying to hear. It was, November, <laughs> it was November 11th when I was working. I had called her. I said, hey, babe, come pick me up. I'm getting out of work. She was with her friend. Yes, she was. I was a little furious because... Earlier that day, I had went through her cell phone. I have authority for it. I had her password. I'm not, I'm not a mind reader. I can't guess a password. I went through it. I seen some pictures that she sent to some kid. Now, mind you, we're living together. She's living in my home. We're doing everything as a couple. You have no right showing your body to another guy, especially if you're living with me and we're boyfriend and girlfriend. So I, I let her go. That's out. a reasonable statement. Exactly. I was, I was frustrated. Yeah, I'm a chef. Chef, I came home from work. I was mad. I was like, all right, go out. Have fun. Have a good time. She comes home at 3 o'clock in the morning. She goes, why would you go through my phone? I said, you gave me the authority to, just because you told me to do it this day doesn't mean I'm going to do it this day. I'm going to do it when you I'm least gonna expect I'm going to do it when you're least expecting exactly. it. Exactly. So what she failed to mention was, yes, I did grab her shoulders. I did put her on the bed. It's 3.30 in the morning. Our landlord lived above us. She's flipping out. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm going to the shelter. I said, no, stay here. We'll, just like she said, we'll deal with it in the morning. I didn't hit her because if I hit her, I would have been arrested for domestic assault. It, she doesn't say you hit her. Cops. She doesn't know what you did to her, yeah. but she doesn't say you hit her. Well, she threw both fish tanks. Yes, she did. And one of them did hit my foot. That's why was I had... cut? Yeah, I got seven stitches on my right foot. Do you have a medical record? Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Where's her phone, Mr. Pasco? Well, when she moved out, she had some other things there, and I thought I gave it to her, but I did some spring cleaning. I found a couple of her things. I happened to find that. Did her through Gmail. I contacted her little sister through her Facebook. I'm coming to the house. I'm dropping off the phone. I went to the house, knocked on the door. She was there. I said, hey, here's your phone. She goes, I don't want it, and shut the door. Why? I asked him in January of 2013. This was for four months I've been asking for the phone. Wait, wait, wait. Just a second. Did he come to give you back your phone? Yes. Well, then what are you suing him for? The phone, which he put in the mailbox, <laughs> and then the harassment, and on top of that, the black router box that came with my cell phone plan. Okay. And to this day, Your Honor, I still can't find that box, that black okay. box. It doesn't have the box, and you don't want the phone. <laughs> he, he wanted the phone, you would have taken the phone when he handed it to you. I've been asking it for four months, and he should have gave it to me in January. Should have, would have, could have, but you're here now. That's what you're suing for. See? Oh, and I... Oh, sorry. Dumb. <laughs> Anything else you want to tell me? Yes. Um... This whole fight that had occurred that night when the police had responded, um, what she also failed to mention is that she went outside and threw a cinder block through my car windshield. That's why the police came. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And later today, Nadia Clay says, ex-boyfriend George Bosco owes for the return of a phone and for an assault. George is countersuing for medical bills and moving expenses. Now, did you throw a cinder block through his car window? Yes, and then he proceeded to sell that car and got a new car. And then it's another car he sold and got a... a did you fix white... the window? Yeah. Yes. Do you have the receipt? No, I fixed it myself. He um, goes to the I'm, not, I'm not worried about the windshield. I'm not worried about that. Oh, no, she would have yeah. paid for that. Well, she would have paid for that, hissy fit. And in addition to that, Your Honor, which it states in my eviction papers, I was evicted because of that. 
And my landlord had stated in my Don't eviction Don't tell me that the landlord stated unless you have something in your eviction papers. Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at How long had you been living there, Mr. Bosco, I before she moved in? I was there six months prior to her moving in. Okay. The lease was terminated because of her actions, yes. according to this. And I do think that she's responsible for that. So whether he sold the car after you threw the shield of the car or whether he kept the car and fixed it himself is really of very little consequence. The commotion that was caused that evening was caused by your actions. And he was injured. You were not. So I think you are responsible on the counterclaim. The only medical bill that I have is $485. Did you find another apartment? Yes, I did. When? Three weeks after this whole situation. Where did you stay for that three-week period? I stayed there. I had talked to the landlord. I went upstairs. I said, listen, I'm not a millionaire. I can't just up and go. He said, I'll give you three weeks. You have to be out by this time. I moved out. The host was in perfect condition. There was no further contact between uh, the landlord and I. Do you have any bills that you can verify your moving expenses with? Because that's also what you're suing for. No, I used a friend's truck. And I had... In any event, so the answer is no. There's nothing else on your side of the table? No. No, great. All right. $485 is what she owes you for the medical bills and $500, which I'm charging her for the fact that you had to move. Thank you. And you had to move because of her actions. I'm awarding you $985. Thank you very much. That's Thank you. I desire excuse you, Mr. Pratt. You don't belong breaking people's stuff. If I'm housewarming you, respect me. Know your place. I don't care. It is what it is. I just want to go back to New York. By the acting, her acting extremely ratchet. I don't want to say nothing. I don't care. I just want to get off. And trying to just be something that she's not, you have to pay the pipe. Do you do? I'm a dog trainer. You do that full time? Yes, I do. For how long? More than 30 years. And where do you train dogs? In the Fort Lauderdale, Florida area. You have a place of business? I do. I often work in my clients' homes. And is that your sole source of income? Yes, it is. How much did you earn last year from that business? Probably close to $50,000. And the year before? About the same. And that's all you've done? That's what you do? That's all I do. Who do you live with, Ms. Tenner? I live with myself. And you, Ms. Wheeler, what do you do? I am a fleet finance director for an automobile dealership. Where? In Fort Lauderdale, Florida. How long have you been doing that? 30 plus years. How long in Fort Lauderdale? 30 plus years. I'd like you to tell me about this loan that you allegedly made to your friend. Uh, Susie moved to South Carolina, I believe, in 2011 with her daughter and moved up to her husband. So in 2011, she left Fort Lauderdale and moved to South Carolina? Correct. And she was having a very hard time making a living up there. We were very good friends. We spoke on the phone often. And she was having a very difficult time. How long have you known her? Probably close to 30 years. Go ahead. I felt very badly for her. I knew she was very talented. I knew she had a lot of experience in the auto industry. We spoke at length on the telephone, and Susie felt quite sure that she could make a good living with an internet car business, and I decided to go ahead and loan her the money to do that. No, I want you to tell me the conversation that you had, the two okay, of you. Okay, we were talking, and Susie was telling me that she was having a very hard time making it. She said it was very difficult to get a job up there. Well, that was over a long period of time. I want you to tell me specifically about the loan. Okay. We discussed Susie starting an internet automobile business. I asked her what would be involved. She said that she would need an excellent website, that she would need business cards, she would need a phone line. She had a lot, a lot of contacts that she felt would help her succeed in this business. And I agreed with her because she had been in the business for so long and had done very well. I myself have purchased a few cars from her over the years. And I asked her how much she felt it would take. And she said it would be roughly $6,000 for her to get started and off the ground. And when did that conversation take place? I believe it was December of 2011 or January 2012. Okay. Go ahead. So after speaking and talking back and forth and considering Susie's contacts and her ability to make a good living there, I was concerned for her. I was concerned for her daughter. I heard all of that. And I agreed to loan her $6,000 to start this business. Okay. Do you have proof of that check? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. Actually, it was a wire transfer. Okay. What happened? What happened was I was under the impression that Susie was getting this business going. We spoke about a website. I was under the impression that she had sent the money to have the website done for her. We talked again about business cards and all the things that she would need. And my understanding was that this was going to happen in South Carolina. And the next thing I knew was that Susie called to say that she was not able to make it in South Carolina. She didn't want to be there anymore. She was going to bring her dog, leave her husband. And I... Excuse me one second. Didn't you tell me to leave South Carolina? No, no, no. Yeah, you'll have a chance to talk. Oh, okay. You'll have a chance to talk. Go ahead. Okay. I so she moved back to Fort Lauderdale. She moved back to Fort Lauderdale, and she came with her daughter and lived with me. For how long? 
I think it was four or five months. Actually, I homeschooled her daughter through the end of the seventh grade during that time. In what month and year did you leave South Carolina and move back to Fort Lauderdale? January 2011. And you went right to Miss Tanner's house? Yes. And you stayed there for how long? Four months until we were asked to leave. When you were there for four months, did you pay rent? Did not. Pay utilities? We, I, we supplied all the food. Did you pay utilities? No. What conversation did you have that caused her to leave after four months? I actually was on the phone with her daughter that day. They were visiting Susie's mom. Her daughter had not gotten her work done the way she was supposed to for school. I had not seen a dime or any attempt on Susie's part to repay me. And actually, the conversation I had was with her mom. Susie's mom picked up the phone and said, Tracy, do you want them to leave? And I said, if it's that easy, yes, I do. And they did. They moved out the next day. Okay. Had the household been strained? For the last several weeks, it was, certainly. Tell me why. Well, because Susie had made no attempt to repay me. We had discussed it at length. Was she I working? She was working barely, on and off. She had gotten a, a brief part-time job. And she was going to a lot of flea markets. She was going to yard sales. She was coming home with all sorts of rugs and tables and chairs and clothes. And I could not understand where she was getting the money and why the money was going into that rather than making an attempt to repay me. Okay. You're up. Okay. While living up in South Carolina, again, Tracy and I were very good friends. She was calling. We were speaking. I was calling her. She approached me with a business opportunity and said she had been talking to a friend of hers, and her friend had suggested with the talent that I have in the business that she invest in opening up a business. So she actually came to me about doing it. I said, let me have a day or so to think about it, and we'll talk about it. So after discussing it with my husband and, and what was going on up there, I called her back, and I said, yeah, let's figure out what the figures would be to start a business. We'll need a web page, business cards. I'll have to go out and do some advertising, that type of thing. So at that time, she did wire transfer me the money. Just a second. Yes. Well, if what you're suggesting is that you were going into business together, is that what you're suggesting? I had asked her if she wanted to put the business in her name for the tax write-off or whatever the case may be, and I would just work for her, then that was okay, too. And she said, no, I want you to do it 100% on your own. This is an investment. And No, I'm just asking you, clearly, based upon your last answer to me, if you're going into business with somebody, you... Yes, we were going into business together. Well, that's what I'm asking you all. What was the business arrangement? Business arrangement was that we would get the business up and going, and she would get a percentage of the profit. What percentage of the profit? Uh, I believe it. You're just, right now you're making it up. I'm looking at your face, and right now you're making up this answer. You're trying to figure out where I'm going to go. I'm trying to remember what the percentage is. No, is, you're, try, you're making it up. Because if you have a business deal with somebody, and they're supplying the money, and you're supplying the work, you say, well, it's a 60-40 split, it's a 70-30 split, it's a 50-50 split. That's not hard to remember. If it's a business investment, when I asked you that question, you looked at me like a deer in headlights. It was a percentage. I really don't remember what the percentage was. Well, then was. you had no business deal. If you had no percentage, you had no business deal. And if you had a business deal that you were supposed to take the $6,000 and invest it in the business, even according to your own answer, you spent it on yourself and I, your daughter, no, some of it. I have receipts of what the money that went into the business. Even by virtue of your own answer, you acknowledge that you spent money. What did I say I spent money on? Moving. I didn't say I spent money on moving. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. There it is. $1,500 was going to cover my relocation costs. That was separate from this loan, Your Honor. This loan is for $5,000 for the business. The $6,000, the other thousand, was a personal loan, totally separate from this case. Well, then you didn't acknowledge that. You say $1,500 was going to cover my relocation costs. You didn't make that up just a moment. That's not 1000 First of all, it's 1500 And you didn't say that that 1500 was a personal loan. Did you repay it? No. How come that doesn't say anything here about a loan that you didn't repay? Because this has nothing to do with this case. From sure what it does. She said $6,000. You just said to me $5,000 was for the business. The other $1,000 was for a personal $4, loan. $4,500 was for the business. No. 15, yes. $1,500 was for a personal loan. I'm telling you that's what it just was. Just a second. That's not what you said here. Well, I can't help but what, what they wrote. I'm telling no. you what I said. No, no, no. You signed. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And later today, Tender says, former friend Suzanne Wheeler owes for a loan to start a business. Suzanne claims the money was an investment, not a loan. You signed. You want to look at what you signed? 4500 no. business loan. Show me where it says that anywhere. You want to look at it? Over. I want to give that to her, please. Maybe I should have read a little more. Just show me where it says. Right that. here, agreed to 4500 was allocated for business costs, right there. 
You just told me 5,000 was allocated for business costs. 4,500 was for... You just, no, I'm trying to do this by memory. From judgment over from the plaintiff ago. for the amount of $5,000. Don't do it by memory. If you have, Whatever. Well, that's all. Thank that's you. all. Thank you. Bodies are excused. You may step out. You know, I think it was probably foolish. Susie and I had known each other a very long time. It was a business investment. It didn't work. And I really thought she'd be successful and we would never get to this point. It just got ugly. That's all. The final straw, I think, was Susie spending money on herself and making no attempt whatsoever to repay me. You know, if everybody could invest in a business and get 100% of their money back, we'd all be doing it. I get loan money to friends. Our friendship is still friendship as far as not business. I hope that we will be. I hope that we will be, and this is, it helps us to put it all in pass. And filing a false restraining order. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2023, Henderson versus Williams. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Henderson, you and your kids and Miss Williams and her kids decided to rent a house together. Yes. And when was that initially? We moved in January 21st of 2021. How large a house was it? Five bedroom. And who moved in with you? Me, my two children, Tara, her three children, and... The third roommate? Yes. What was your share of the rent? The share of the rent? Yours. Fourteen ninety-five. And yours? We paid, me and her split it, and then took cash from... The third roommate? Yes, so fourteen ninety-five too. And you lived there for a year? What I gather is sort of towards the end of the year, things were getting a little testy between the two of you, either because of you or because of the kids. You had children, and things weren't working out so that both of you were not real happy with each other. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. It, it started earlier in 2021. I'm sure, but at the time that the lease was up, you both weren't really happy with each other. And according to your complaint, she left... You were stuck paying the rent, and she had signed a renewal of the lease, and you want her to pay her portion of the rent until you found a new roommate, which you actually found a new roommate several months later. The defendant says she told you that she was contemplating living with you for another year, that her speculation that you went into her room and took a signed copy of the lease and gave it to the rental agent or whoever it was... It would have been in the kitchen in my well, area where my neighbors were. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. And it was never her intention to sign a second lease. Your lease was up in January of 2022. Yes. The defendant was away for a period of time. When was the defendant away just prior to January of 2022? She went to Hawaii for... And the signed copies of the lease to the landlord? No, they were turned in in December. By both of you? For the lease renewal, all three of us re-signed in December. And I have a copy of that. What I'm asking you is, were they turned in? Because that's very easy to verify. Were they all turned in before she went to Hawaii? Yes. Okay. I'll see what you have. Well, Miss Williams, if it's your statement that she took your signed copy of the lease and turned it in without your permission at some point when you were in Hawaii. That's what you're alleging. If this doesn't bear that out, Miss Williams, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't lend itself to the truth of that statement because this indicates that the two of you and the third roommate signed this on December the 19th. Then you turned it in. Then it was turned in. That was before you went to Hawaii. The landlord signed it on December 20th which means that if the landlord signed it on December 20th, he signed it before you went to Hawaii, which means she couldn't have stolen your copy of the lease. Right. Do you understand? Yeah, no, I'm not stating I was in Hawaii when she turned it in. I left for Hawaii January 8th through the 18th. I understand that. Okay. I was unaware. Shh. When our lease was up for renewal, we weren't getting along, and I was on the fence about spending another year with Ellen. In December, we received a copy of the lease renewal. I felt pressured into signing it, but then we told Ellen we needed more. I decided to hold on to the lease until I returned. Where did you go? I went to Hawaii. Well, that was in January. Yes. Well, but the landlord got a copy of the signed agreement December 20th. I didn't know it was turned in. Oh, I well, receive an I email, don't know whether so it was turned I, in or not. So I, I emailed RentCon, okay. and I have messages stating it was received from Ellen. Okay. I'll see what you have. No, the next. this doesn't say that at all. Lease renewal was signed by all three tenants. Correct. 
The lease was signed by all three tenants, and it was received before you went to Hawaii on the 20th of December. Okay. Easy. You moved out in February? January 31st of 22. When was the first lease up? The 22nd what? of January 22. So you stayed on after the lease was up? Yes. Why? I wasn't completely moved out yet. Oh, I was in Hawaii. Too bad. I had reached out to Rincon about paying extra to pay the extra few days. No. Okay. And when did you get a new roommate? Did you keep blowing her off or did you answer her? No, I didn't. No, no, just a second. I did not. Did you blow her off or did you answer? So the answer is you blew her off. You blew her off. Yes. About the rent that she was stuck with. Right. Right. Okay, good. Ellen Henderson claims her ex-roommate, Tara Williams, broke their lease and filed a false restraining order against her. Tara is countersuing for her security deposits, utilities, and damaged property. Okay, when did you get a new roommate? She moved in February, March, and then prorated April. Well, February and March, 1495, 29.90. Okay, the next part of your case involves filing for a false restraining order. Did you file a restraining order, Ms. Williams, against Ms. Henderson? Yes. I'd like to see what it says. No, no, don't give me that whole thing. Your application for a restraining order, I'd like to see what your application for... Don't hand them that whole thing. I said I'd like to see what your application for a restraining order said. Okay, so what you say is she sent you three letters. You're asking because she sent you three letters. They were annoying. I want to know what she was asking for in those letters. Was she asking for rent money? Was she asking for rent? Yes. Okay, so she was asking for her money. Yes. For your rent money for yes. the months that she didn't have a roommate. Well, that's yes. not harassment, madam. There's more, but... Yeah. What? Th there's more. She's telling me that I stole some of her stuff and stuff. In, in the first letter, it says, if you don't pay this in five days, we'll take... Yeah, she's the allowed to say that. Okay. Yeah, which so is she totally wrote to fine, you. but she sent it two more times, emailed it, and then showed up at my children's school while I was dropping them off. Did you keep blowing her off or did you answer her? No, I didn't. No, no, just a second. I did not. Did you blow her off or did you answer? So the answer is you blew her off. Yes, I was fine with going to court. You blew her off? Yes. About the rent, which she was stuck with. Right. Right. Okay, good. Twenty nine ninety is what she owes you for rent. Now, part of your counterclaim for get money for debt. Me and her. No, how much did she pay? It was half of... How much was your security debt? $1,747.50. $1,747. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And where is her security deposit? In our lease, it states that if you break the lease, the deposit stays with the house. And I have an email from the property management stating that same thing, that she signed a lease saying that if she leaves early, the money stays with the house until everyone moves out. So the security deposit, if you and your new roommate keep the house safe, you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And you don't allege any damage. Is that correct? I had to clean up the carpets in her room upstairs. And okay, do you have an invoice for that? No, I did it myself. Okay, 2990 yeah. less 1747? $1,243. So far she owes you $1,243. That's less the security deposit, which you and your hopefully neat roommate will get back. May I say something about what? the payments for rent? So it was me and her doing equal rent at seventeen ninety five twenty five. So that's what I paid. Me and her paid that in January, and I paid that. I paid the entire amount in February, March. I understand she was no longer paying rent. So, You're getting the rent, but I'm deducting so my from pay, that. My portion is seventeen ninety five, and that's what I'm asking her for, because that's what her portion was when okay. she moved out as well. Just a second. Am I correct that she, at the time you moved in, individually, Paid as a security deposit $1,747. Is that correct? Yeah, but I'm talking about the rent payments. It's not $1,495, it's $1,795. Was your rent each month $1,495 or $1,795? $1,795. Can I see it? 
Anybody have any proof of that? I printed out the log, but she paid us 300. The third roommate? Yes. The third roommate? Right. So your amount was 1495. Correct. I got it. Okay. Until Good. the end of December. Okay, I'm finished. Now, the next part of your counterclaim is for utilities. Security deposit you get back. What utilities do you think she utilities, owes you? Utilities? Uh, she did not pay me November, December, January, or February closing for utilities. Did you pay them? I paid them. I'd like to see where you paid them. No, don't give me a whole bunch of papers. I don't want to see a whole bunch of papers that I have to go through. I want to see what utilities there were, when you Just sent like her, bank when bank you bank sent bank. her a statement of what the utilities were. Yes. I assume it worked that she paid you a portion of the utilities. Yes, it was What split. portion of the utilities did you pay? We split it equally the whole time we were there. Okay, so whatever utility bills that were paid by her, you were supposed to pay half. Correct. Which did you? I, my last payment to her was December 4th for Spectrum, Water, Trash, and Gas. That was 12-4. Mm -hmm. How much did you pay her? 364.61. Okay, just a second. Did she pay you 364 in December? She did for prior months. So that was for November. That covered November. If it was paid in December, that covered November. It would have been more so October. I oh, I ran can't, a I can't get in, I okay. can't get yeah. involved I, with I, that, I, madam. Don't give him a whole bunch of papers. Don't give him a whole bunch of papers. December and January statement for utilities. You were gone in February. Yes. December and January getting your rent. Now we're going to settle up on the utilities. What and I didn't include it in the lawsuit, but she still owes me for trash. And I have a list of stuff that she took of mine that I did write. I'm, I'm not interested about. in it, Miss Henderson. And it didn't work out. You should be very happy. She's gone. You didn't like her. She overcharged me utilities with her business expenses. Okay. Every month we live there. Did you come in contact with her on the 25th of May in a pedestrian car incident? Not that I recall. About one minute to eight in the morning. Who drives a white minivan? Me. Ellen Henderson has accused her ex-roommate, Tara Williams, of breaking their lease. Tara claims she filed the restraining order because Ellen was stalking her. Miss Henderson, it didn't work out. You should be very happy. She's gone. You didn't like her. She overcharged me utilities with her business expenses. Okay. Every month we live there. We have a bill for December and January. If there's anything here that's not December and January, I'm dismissing that part of your claim. And I already have a bill that's dated April of 2022. Right. That was for January and February water. That's 390. Billing date 414. No. It was. No. I want you, because I'm losing my patience slowly. Please. Read out the bills, the total bills for December and January only. Sarah, get ready. Can it go till February 1st? Yes. Okay. By the way, while she's looking for that, did you go to her kid's school? I didn't pick up a letter from the mailbox. She knew it was coming from me, and I had to go back to the mailbox and get it after a month. Okay. And I didn't know where she lived. I didn't know else, how else to reach her. Okay. Did you come in contact with her on the 25th of May in a pedestrian car incident? Not that I recall. About one minute to eight in the morning. Who drives a white minivan? Me. What was the date? May 25th. Oh, yeah, that was her kid's school. That was her kid's school when okay. I delivered the letter. Well, that's why she filed for protective order against you. Not unreasonable. It was dismissed after a hearing or it was just dismissed? It was dismissed after a hearing. Yeah. Part of your claim for filing a false restraining order is dismissed. I could actually see why you would get frightened if somebody went to your kid's school to serve you papers. Okay. What are the bills for utilities? Can I just say something? Sure. I had to give her those letters in order to file for small claims. I okay. Had, I had tried to mail it, and she didn't I, go to the post office. I, I got it. I got it. Could we have the utilities? 
Which utility and what is it? You should have all this together for me and not make it difficult. Okay. This is why you were coming. Don't read out the numbers okay. of what the utility is for what month and the amount. So water, 257.94. Water for February was 132.09. For 1203 bill date for electricity was 167. What date? 1220. That's December. Yes, I thought that we was were for doing November. I thought we were doing December, January. For December, but you wouldn't have dealt with November. It okay. was prepared 1203. They're not prorated. Come on. Let's go. Okay. Uh, 204, this was prepared for electricity, 7472. Okay. This one was for. The date that I ended of 128 to 201, it was 1278 for Edison, electricity. Let's move on. And then this is gas for 1229 to 127, it was 3704. And then the okay. ending charges was 572. Got it. Yes. $5.72, I can't believe it. Okay, would you add those up? Yeah. And your arrangement with her, Miss Henderson, was that you each paid half of the utilities, is that right? Can I say something about that too? Back in April or May of 2021, I had went to her to speak and ask about me paying less for water, gas, and electric because she brought all of her Airbnb laundry. She has a cleaning business. And our washers and dryers were going constantly. And? And she didn't meet me halfway, so I was stuck paying okay. half. Fine, fine. I have the total for you ready. 507.51. Divide it by two. Two hundred and fifty-four dollars. Twelve forty-three less two fifty-four. Twelve forty-three is what she's owed now, less the security deposit. I love this case. Couldn't be more excited about it. Nine eighty-nine. Judgment for the plaintiff. Nine hundred and eighty-nine. Your Honor, is that I finished. Thank you very much. That We're done. Court is adjourned. Thank you. It's it's sad that I lost, but I put up a good fight. I'm happy with the decision. She didn't want to live with me that there were issues. Why would you turn in a lease to renew for a whole nother entire year with someone? It's been a lot of stress. I wanted her to file suit so I could see her in court in order to take care of the, the matter. I had nowhere to go and I didn't think she was going to renew. It's going to be a good situation. I really got along and I loved her and her kids and I don't know that I could have done anything different. So the new phenomenon that I've seen over this past generation for as long as I've been in this business is because of the economy, people having to live together that are either in love with each other or related True. to each other. And I actually think, Sarah, that's such a very hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't the first case that we've had that involved adults and their kids having to, for financial reasons, move in with each other. I think I've always said, and I don't know how you feel about this, that I'd rather live in a shoebox alone <laughs> than with strangers mm -hmm. in more comfortable surroundings. Sure. I think that's a tough call that a lot of people are having to make nowadays with the cost of living and inflation. Young There's people. Young people. Two single mothers trying to live together with their children to give them a home environment. So it's, it's a risk that you take when you don't know the other person. Even when you do know them, we see family members fighting all the time. It. So I think it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, I don't know. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that people have to make those kinds of choices for happiness. It shouldn't create that kind of stress. I think the best thing you can do is have a concrete contract to fall back on for if something like this happens because yeah, it's a very no, stressful situation. Yeah, but nobody wants to take that risk. Yeah. Nobody wants to, who's signing a lease agreement, say, if yeah. it doesn't work out, this is what happens. Well, that's never between the tenant and the landlord. Mm -hmm. As between those two people, maybe it would be enforceable, yeah. but not between the two tenants and the landlord. Landlords suing his former tenants, Samuel Gastelum, for an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case number 2035, Rodriguez versus Gastelum. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. What kind of a premises do you live in, sir? It's a four-bedroom house. And I see here that you rent out some of the rooms in order to assist with your mortgage. That's correct. How many rooms do you rent out? Three. And who lives in the other? Right now, it's Kathleen Meister, and then I have two other roommates. And you use one room? Correct. When did you rent a room to the defendant? It was January 22. And what was the rent that you were charging him? 750 a month. When he came to you, did he have a dog? 
No. When did you move in? About late January. Give me a day. 22nd. And you moved in alone? Yes, ma'am. Paid your rent on time? Yes, ma'am. February, paid your rent on time? Yes, ma'am. Lived there alone? Yes, ma'am. What about March? Did I live there alone in March also? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. When did you get a dog? I've had my dog. Now, when did you get a dog that you brought into the house? April 22nd, 23rd. So several months after you moved in. Mm-hmm, mm hmm A hum is not an answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And before you moved the dog in, did you have a discussion with the plaintiff? Yes, ma'am. Just yeah. prior to moving in with the dog, and what was the discussion that you had with the plaintiff? That if it was okay if I were to bring my dog for, that I had in Alaska, since I had him since he was about six, seven weeks. And where had he been in the last two months? Um, he was still in Alaska, staying with uh, close friends, and I flew to Seattle, shipped my truck and all my belongings to Seattle, and drove here. Uh, from Seattle, well, my dog, the person who was watching him, drove from Alaska to Montana and had so, gone to Montana to pick him up. So you asked Mr. Rodriguez if it was okay if you brought your dog? Yes, ma'am. And what did he say? Yes. Did he say anything else? He said, just clean now up. look at me. He said, clean Did he say anything he else said, other than. After the dog, make sure that the dogs don't fight and just take care of him. Okay. Nothing about him staying out of the house. He said he wouldn't prefer him to be around the house, but he would not. It would be okay for him to be in my room. In your room. Mm -hmm. The dog stayed with me in that room a few nights, and he knew, knowingly knew about it. No, I don't want to know what he knew. I want to know what your arrangement was. So your arrangement with him, according to you, not to have to stay outside, but could stay in your room. He said he didn't want him in the living area. He, my dog right. could also be in the garage or in, in your room. And was everything okay in April when you brought the dog? Yeah, everything was What fine. about May? May, I was looking for a new place. I was homeless because I had spent five days in jail. Oh, I'm talking about before you went to jail, sir. Before um, you went to jail, because this case is about an assault, which is what the plaintiff is claiming. Plaintiff is claiming that you assaulted him in the home, mm -hmm. and that took place on April 30th. Mm -hmm. That was shortly after your dog arrived? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the dog was the reason for the altercation. A part of because the reason, but that's in how it started. February, March, and up until April, the end of April, when the dog was there, I see no evidence here that there was any difficulty. You're right. That's fair We've... statement? Yeah. So that the problem arose when the dog came. Now, this woman's name is Kathleen. She's interspersed in both the complaint and the answer in this case. She had a cat. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh is not an answer. Yes, ma'am. He had a cat. And it was a house cat. Yes, ma'am. Plaintiff has a dog. A few dogs. And they live in the house. Yes, they stay in the garage and in the backyard. Yes. Garage and backyard, do they stay in the house? They do not go inside the house. Okay. So his dogs stay outside, and he said to you, according to you, the dogs can stay outside in the garage and in your room. Yes. In April, did your dog get out of your room or into the house? Yes. Yes. On what date? April 30th, because I was allowing him inside to go to my room. On April 30th, the dog was where? in the backyard, but I was bringing him inside to come to my room. You were bringing him from outside to come into your room. Mm -hmm. I haven't asked him. He says in his papers that the dog was supposed to remain outside. You were bringing him inside to your room. Yes, ma'am. Because it is your claim here that it is an Alaska. With right? people I trust. I don't care people who you trust or not. If you need an emotional support animal, the emotional support animal has to travel with you. So don't show me a certificate. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. By the way, did that certificate that you have come from a psychiatrist? Uh, no. No. Did it come from a psychologist? No. Did it come from any doctor who was treating you? There was a doctor's note, yes. Was a doctor who was treating you? Yes. Yes. Not a psychiatrist? Not a psychiatrist, no. Not a psychologist? Not a psychologist. And you took this note and you had to send it to somebody over the internet? Yes. And then they sent you a certificate? Yes. And uh, with an that, idea. That's what I got. Okay, so now you're bringing the dog on April 30th from the backyard into the house, and... He attempts to grab the dog. No, no, no. Is the dog on a leash? No, he's very well... Just a sec. Is the dog on a leash? No. Were you holding the dog by the collar? Yes. And now you're taking the dog from outside to inside. What did he say to you? No dogs in the house. Because that's what he had said to you before. You can have your dog, but no dogs in the house. 
I want to tell you something. That's what I believe. So he said, no dogs in the house. And you said to him, I'm going to bring my dog into my room. But when you asked him if you could bring the dog to the house, there is no question in my mind that he said to you, bring the dog to the house, but the dog doesn't come into the house. He stayed in my room a few nights prior to I that. I don't I mean, care. Already Listen to me. That's it. what the arrangement was, sir. Okay. The arrangement was not what you told me before. The arrangement was with him. Yes, you can bring the dog to the house. I will let you do that. But the dog has to stay either in the garage or outside like my dogs. Okay. And you said, in effect, screw you. I'm bringing my dog and I'm bringing my dog into my room. In You're the tenant. That was the agreement. You can have the dog, but the dog must not be in the house. That's what your landlord told you. You brought the dog from Alaska. And at the very beginning, you brought the dog into your room. Mm -hmm. When had you decided that you were going to breach the agreement with him? The very first night I went to receive my dog, he stayed at the house inside my room with me. So the very first night that you brought him, you decided to breach the agreement that he you had. He had knowingly with. said it was OK. Did you tell him it was OK? Never. I have texts. All day here. <laughs> Nobody is hungry. I'm a Still little have hungry. two more cases to do before lunch. Everybody gets a little testy, including me. I don't have the text. Hmm? I do not have the text. Yeah, good. That's what I thought. OK. It wasn't on the 30th that the dog got loose in the house. It was sometime before that, maybe a day or so before that. On the 30th was a day, sir, that you got locked out of the house. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh yes, is Your not Honor. an answer. Yes, Your Honor. OK. And what time of the day was it that you got locked out of the house? 2 o'clock, after, middle afternoon, late afternoon. And According to what I read, you went to the back of the house to let yourself into the house, and you got into an altercation with Kathleen. Absolutely, she shouldn't have put her hands on and slapped you because you were fresh. Because you wouldn't be fresh to me, right? Fresh? Fresh. That's what you say to a child. Fresh. How old are you? 65. How old are you? 25. That's fresh. Armando Rodriguez claims his former tenant, Samuel Gastelou, is responsible for damages from an assault. Samuel says he was the one assaulted and falsely arrested. Now, you got into an altercation with Kathleen. Not quite, Your Honor. Well, tell me what happened. I had been outside. I went out the garage, and I was playing a time-sensitive game on my Xbox. So I was going back to the room, and I knocked on the garage door. No one answered. Knocked on it a few times, pounded. And I went back around and knocked on the, on the gla siding glass door a few times, one of the few times. Finally, Kathleen comes up and answers the door. At that point, I've been out there for about 10 minutes. So I'm upset. I'm like, who locked me out? Who locked the door? She gets completely defensive. She says, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And I'm like, I'm asking who it was because Armando and I had discussed. Because you're on a time-sensitive yes, yes, video game. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So you were on a time-sensitive yeah, video game. Time How sensitive. old are you? 25 years old. OK, so now you're on a time-sensitive video game, and somebody either on purpose or accidentally locked the door, and you think it's Kathleen. No, I did not accuse anyone. I okay. just asked was who uh, to the house. on my... No, no, no. Did you have... I had a front door key, key, not to the garage door, not to the sliding door. But you had a front door key. Yes, Your Honor, but there's a gate. There's a big fence, and I didn't have a key to the gate that was locked. You couldn't get into the house yes. even with your front door key. Yes, Your Honor. Is that what you're telling yes, me? Yes, Your Honor. OK. Now, after you had a conversation with her, there was no physicality between the two of you. Not at that moment. But once Armando came around the corner, he's like, it was me who locked you out. So me and him started. Now, just a second. He said, it was me that locked you out. Mm -hmm. Did he say he did that? On purpose, or was it was it an accident? accident? Is what did he, he said. say? Okay, so he said it was me that locked you out. It was an accident. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. The uh huh. First time. It's not. Yes, Your Honor. That's yes. First, second, I've locked my children out of the house many times. Sometimes on purpose. I'm not his child. By accident. I'm his roommate. It doesn't make any difference. So he said to you, it was an accident, and you said to him, it's happened before. before. And he said to you, those were accidents also. Okay, and he said those were accidents also. Yes. And you said to I him... I said, you need to be more attentive, more aware. If someone had just walked out and left the door unlocked, you should probably go and see if anyone's out there before you turn around and lock the door. And he said? He said he apologized. He OK, said, so he said, I apologize. Yes. OK, what's next? Throwing out that whole conversation, me and him are, are arguing OK, but at the end, he said, I'm sorry. He said, I apologize. 
It's not so clear cut. It's not well, so at the end of this back and forth, you shouldn't, you should have been more careful, you should look to see who's at the door. You've done it before. I'm sorry, it was an accident. I apologize. Now I have an apologize. And in next. In the middle of that altercation, Kathleen kept butting in. She said, you don't talk to me like that. You don't talk to me like that. I said, I wasn't even talking to you. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm talking to Armando. And I said, mind your own business. She said, oh, you don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me what to do. I said, mind your own business. She said, say that to me one more time. And I said, mind your own business. She walks across the hall and she slaps me across the face. And Armando grabs her hand right after she smacks me. And instead of retaliating aggressively or any type of thing, I call the police, immediately call the police. And while we're waiting there for the police, that's when I get the apology from Armando. That's when he's like, okay, let's make a deal. Let's try to work this out before the police get there. The police get there, they ask me what had happened. And you say, and happened. you say that this older woman slapped you because yeah, you were across fresh. The face. Because you were fresh. No, because she, she shouldn't, believes. She shouldn't have she, put her hands on and slapped you because you were fresh. And she should not have put her hands on you. Would I have called the police about that? Hmm, maybe. Except but I am not let a me child. Beg just a sec. I'm not a child. I'm not related to these people. I just said to you, you were being fresh. How old are you? 65. How old are you? 25. That's fresh. That's fresh. Because first you accused her of locking you out. I didn't accuse then, her. Yeah. OK. So. After she slapped you, the police arrived, they left. She said, she slapped you, yes. We have marks, you have cuts, you have bruises, you have abrasions. No, they left. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you expect when you called the police for them, for them to arrest her? What I did just, you want them to do, sir? Uh, was what I supposed to did you want? How was I what? supposed to retaliate? Was just I supposed to hit her back? Just a second, no. Okay, then what was no. I supposed to do? I'm not telling you what to do. Okay. I'm just asking you, sir, did you expect them, when you called the police, to arrest Kathleen because she slapped you. No, I expected there to be consequences for her assaulting me. What? So I don't what, know what did you think? So were. what did you think that they are. should do? Whatever they feel was right. Uh, okay. Whatever is justice. Okay. Now let's move on. Mm -hmm. So now the police are gone, and I go speak to Armando. I asked why he sacrificed his integrity for lying for Kathleen for saying that she didn't slap him because he told the police he witnessed no such event. He didn't see nothing. You no, know, he was standing right there, grabbed her hand. Kathleen says she didn't do it. And the police came up to me before they left. They said, they're telling me something else. I just straight up, I just don't believe you. I just like, OK, well, what else can I do? I go to Armando, and I'm like, why, why would you sacrifice your integrity? Why would you lie to the police? Why would you let another roommate physically assault me and just no consequences whatsoever? And at that point is uh, when I tried to bring my dog inside and just go straight to my room. Just right? a second. So at that time, <clears throat> after this hot spot is over. It got heated again. Got, got heated again. Mm -hmm. Your reaction was childish, and you said, I'm going to get my dog mm -hmm. that I was told not to bring in the house, and I'm going to bring my dog in the house. I was going to my Just a second. I don't care if you were going to Pluto. Your reaction after this was, the dog to the house, but the dog can't come in the house, stays outside with his dogs. There's only one animal in the house, and that's Kathleen's house cat. That's it. So you went to bring your dog from outside to in the house. Yes, Your Honor. In violation of the agreement that you had with your landlord. After the police had come, I just want you to realize what's going on. Oh, I... You know, I'm, I just want you to realize that they don't actually keep me here because I'm five, six and gorgeous. I understand what happened when you were disappointed that Kathleen had slapped you like a child because you were fresh. And she's not your mother, and she had no right, even your mother doesn't have a right to put their hands on you. Correct. But you got slapped, not injured, no broken jaw, no broken skin. Police didn't see anything, because if they did, they would have arrested somebody. And they left. And you were royally miffed. Because you got locked out of the house for which she apologized, you missed your time-sensitive video game. Now, I'm not sure what that is, because I'm not a 25-year-old idiot that plays video games during the day. Armando Rodriguez is accusing his former roommate, Samuel Gastelum, of breaking their rental agreement and assaulting him. Samuel claims he was falsely arrested after Armando lied to the police. Now, several things had happened that day, right? You got locked out and you were playing a time-sensitive video game. Yes, Your Honor. 
And because you got locked out of the house for which she apologized, you missed your time-sensitive video game. Now, I'm not sure what that is, because I'm not a 25-year-old idiot that plays video games during the day. <laughs> when I was 25 years old, I actually worked. Mm. I did, I actually worked. I know that may seem foreign to you, but I did actually work. And so after all of this altercation took place, you said, now I'm gonna show, now I'm gonna bring my dog into the house. And then there was another altercation. Second yes. one. Yes. That's the one we're talking about. By the way, maybe I'm being terribly unkind to you, sir. How do you support yourself? I work. For whom? Pretty foreign, I know. For whom? I'm a cultivator. You work five days a week? Yes, Your Honor. And in my free March, so about five months. Prior to that, you were in Alaska. Prior to January, I was in Alaska. And before March, before getting the job at the cultivation facility for cannabis, I was uh, helping my uncles do concrete. So working isn't very foreign to me, as you might see. Prior to March, you were working with your uncles in concrete. Yes, Where? Your Honor, in Victorville, in California. You were, working, I, I have... you were working for your uncle prior to March, getting a job as a cultivator. And what I want to know is, how long had you been separated from your emotional support dog? I spent four months away from him, and those four months were from January to April. For January, job. February, March, April. And what were you doing in Alaska? I was born and raised no, no. in Alaska. No, no, Alaska was... is not a born or that's not a job, sir. What were you doing in Alaska? I was, for the last six months of my time in Alaska, I was a bud tender. Okay, tell me what happened after the dog incident. Well, the dog comes in, he says that he's not gonna follow house rules anymore. And he says, as of right now, he's gonna do what he wants to do. So he just gets the dog from the backyard and he, he comes inside the house. And I feel that it's my responsibility to enforce the house rules. So I physically grab his dog and I move the dog from inside the house to the backyard. That happens once. He gets the dog and then he physically puts him back in the house. Where in the house? This is, you could say the kitchen area. So now I basically attempt to repeat what I did the first time. So I physically grabbed the dog a second time and I'm now physically taking him out, at which point he gets from behind me and he puts me into a chokehold and I black out. I come to, I look for my phone, I find my phone, dial 911, police show up like in maybe two or three minutes and I'm still trying to get... To get. And that's the assault that you are referring to yes, today. Did the EMS check you out? I was taken to the hospital. May I see the report? Yeah, I got a report and then I have the bills associated with okay. them. With... Was Kathleen a witness to this? She saw, she saw. No, like... don't tell me what she saw. Was she a witness to any part of that? Yeah. The yes or no? Yeah. Okay, would you step up, please? We're arguing about the dog. The first time or the second time? Well, you don't know whether. Uh, I don't really know. Were you a witness to any of the physical confrontation that resulted in Mr. Rodriguez going to the hospital? I knew that they... Don't tell me what you knew. Okay. What uh, you saw. Okay, what I saw was Armando trying to put the dog back outside, because he's a big pit bull, right? And then he would put him out, and then um, Samuel would bring him back in. And then the last time, Armando was putting him back outside, and Samuel came behind Armando. And what I did was I left and went and called the police, because I was afraid he was going to get hurt. All right, sir. Now tell me your version of those events. Could I show her statement from the previous court? No, I want you to... First, tell me your version of the event. So I let Apollo inside. My dog's name is Apollo. And he's going to grab Apollo to let him out. And we're both kind of grabbing Apollo, pulling him, trying to, we're both kind of fighting over him a little bit. As I'm pulling him inside more, Armando uh, starts grabbing me. And so we get into this altercation and we're like wrestling back he's and forth. He's just a second. He's trying to get your pit bull outside and at the same time he's grabbing you? Is that... The... No, it was. For, we were both grabbing the dog. So you were trying to keep the dog inside, and he was trying to put I was the dog to take out. I him to my room, yes. Take him. You were trying to take him to your room. He was trying to put him outside. Yes, And? Sir. As we're both kind of fighting for the dog, he grabs me. He lets go of the dog and then grabs me. How did he grab you? He grabs me by the arm, and then he, like, starts uh, tugging a little bit. And so we're wrestling. We just start wrestling, and it gets a little bit more violent. And I go to restrain him, and he's, uh, he's hitting me. He's getting, hitting me from the, uh, with his arms. He's trying to scratch me. And I just restrained him until I felt not threatened no more. I released him. I get up. I grab my dog. I go to the room. I call the police. Mm -hmm. Do you have your medical records that day? They would not take me. They did not. Just, not they would not take you. Do you have your medical records for that day? I have my arrest report that says, apparently, they didn't. May I see the pictures? arrest report, please? They, would, they refused to take pictures. Don't tell me they what refused. they didn't do. 
I could read. Do you have medical insurance, sir? No. None. So you had an emergency room CT scan that was $8,640.62. The other bill for that day, room, which was $1,109. Okay, well, that takes us over this court's limit jurisdictionally. Now, you, sir, subsequently had a hearing with regard to this case. Is that correct? Yes. Did you testify, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Did you testify, sir? I did. At the end of that hearing, was there a restraining order granted or not? It was granted. For how long? Do you have a copy of that? I have a copy. It was a year. So a judge, like me, probably not as good looking, <laughs> after hearing, so I don't have to hear it, all of the evidence, the judge found that there was more evidence than not that you assaulted the plaintiff and granted the plaintiff an order of protection for one year. After that happened, you were still in the house. After the assault or after the hearing? After the assault. After the assault, I was arrested and... And then you came back to the house. Yes, Your Honor. That's what I asked. You were still in the house, but yeah. you're no longer in the house. No. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're finished here. Thank, Thank you. you. This court is adjourned. He's a liar, and I, I told the truth, and I won the case. I didn't aggressively attack him. That was the rules that I, I had set. My dogs don't even come in the house. I defended myself and my dog. I think there was some genuine confusion on the defendant's behalf about the term fresh. When I said to him, you were, f were fresh to an older person. Exactly. You know, he had a little bit of an attitude, a little young gun attitude, and the older woman did not appreciate it. So I am very familiar with the term fresh, but I think he was a little confused. But 100% fits the definition of fresh. It was interesting. The other thing was, I didn't seem appalled at the fact that he was doing time-sensitive video games, because <laughs> I actually understand that from some of our yeah, grandchildren. Yeah, they take the games very seriously. Very seriously. And I could see how missing out on a time-sensitive game could raise an even heated moment even hotter. So. Especially someone who needs an emotional support <laughs> pit bull. Want justice? Go. Hello, Judge. Case number 2003, Gaines versus Gaines. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Miss Gaines, you and the defendant are half sisters. You share the same father. Yes. Have you always had a relationship with your father? Yes. And you, Miss Gaines? Yes. There came a time when you were living with your dad. Yes. From when to when were you living with your dad? From October 2018 to December 2021. And who was living at the same residence? Uh, it was me, my dad, and a roommate, my dad's roommate. No children? Yes, my children stayed there as well. I do okay. apologize. Well, that's important. Sorry. How many children? I have four daughters. How old are they? 11, 10, 4, and 5. Were you working? Yes. From 18 to 21? I stopped working in November 2019, and I started back working October 21. What kind of work do you do? I work for United Healthcare. I'm a customer service rep for Optum. Just so that I get a sense, because this is a family issue, you clearly had a life before you moved to your father's house in 2018. Can you tell me why you moved into your father's house in 2018? Because where I was living, the house was smaller, and my dad felt like he wanted me and my children to be in a safer environment. So you had an ongoing, constant relationship with him? Yes. And Ms. Gaines, tell me about you. Did you ever live with your father? I lived with my father when I was in the ninth grade. But not since you were a child? No. Did you maintain a relationship with him? I did. Me and my father do uh, mechanic work together most of the time, so I'm at his house a lot. Was that a business that you had together? Just more so for fun, family time. Um, if he needed help, I could go in and assist him. I just use that as extra time. And that was consistent and up through 2021? Yes. So you saw your sister there? I... Because she was living there with her children? Yes. On occasion, though, her and her kids would uh, be out more often. I would just go and visit my dad when the house was empty and he needed more company and help and assistance because he was there alone. How old was he, this house, in the years that you were living there? She came to visit, yes. And they worked together on mechanical stuff? I never saw that. Me and my sister, we had a close relationship, so she would come over and hang out with me all the time. Okay, good. 
And then, unfortunately, something happened. Do you want to tell me when that was and what it was? Um, October, I believe it was the 30th, me and my sister, we got into an altercation. Tell me the beginnings of it, because each of you claim that the other harassed, you claim your sister assaulted you, and both of you claim some damage to automobiles that was caused by the other during the course of these altercations. Okay, so tell me what happened in October. So the Thursday prior to the 30th, which was a Saturday in October, my sister was supposed to come to my house and do my kids' hair. But that was something that I had just asked her to do. Like we said, I stayed with my dad. They were having some issues, so I... Who was having issues? My sister and my dad. Were you having issues with your father around that time? I was told I was having issues with my father at that time by my sister, Jessica. Did you discuss it with your father? I did, and I found out that that was a lie that um, Jessica had told him was making up lies to make us like not like each other. Okay, so there was some bad feeling about that. Right, so I w um, was inviting her over because she was struggling, and I needed my kids' hair done for a picture day. So she was what? Struggling. Struggling. Financially. Okay. So I offered to pay her to do my kids' hair. My dad did inform me that she wasn't able to come to the house, that I needed to go to her house. And I don't really know what her situation was like over there, so I let my dad know, like, I was uncomfortable. And I also let her know, like, our dad said it was not okay for you to come over here with us today. And he needs... Pretty much he wanted an apology. He wanted an apology? Yes. From her? Yes. Is your f Okay. Well, then you can't tell me what he told you, because that's hearsay. Did your sister come over to the house on October 30th? Yes. Approximately what time? I believe... 11.30 in the morning. Had you had a conversation with her that morning and told her not to come over? Yes. Did you tell her why? Oh, I can't speak on it because he's not no. here. No. I don't... D my question is, Sorry. did you tell your sister why? Yes. What did you tell your sister? That our dad would not want her there. Is that what she told you? That is what she told me. Did you ask her why? I did. What did she tell you? She told me that my dad was under the impression that I was hanging out with drug dealers and dangerous people and that he didn't want me around. Did you call your father? I did. And you had a discussion with him? I did. Were you invited over to the house? I called... That's either a yes or a no? No. So now you have information, whether accurate or not, that you weren't welcome in your father's house for whatever reason, or for the reason that was articulated to you. Mm -hmm. You called your father to confirm that, and your father did, in fact, confirm that. He confirmed that there was an issue between Jessica and I and that we needed to do, d resolve it. He was not going to get involved with it, but he did not confirm that I was denied access to his house. Well, just from my information, what did you think the issue was between you and your sister? She was lying to my father. Well, no, your father didn't say that, that your sister's lying to me. Your father had to have indicated to you that these are the things that I'm being told. And you have to resolve that with your sister. Yes. But your father told you not to come to the house. No, he did not tell me not to come to the house. Did he suggest you come to the house? Neither. He neither suggested I come or not to. He just said that I should... Resolve it with her. So, yes. Okay. And you went over there that morning? I stated to her that I would come over and resolve it right then and there. You knew she was coming? Yes, she said... Okay, just that's a yes. You knew she was coming, so this wasn't a surprise visit. You knew she was coming. Now tell me what happened when she got there. So when she gets there, me and my dad, we're standing outside already. She gets out of her car. I approach her car. It's a little back and forth, and then... No, no, tell me the back and forth, and try to keep your voice up. Sorry. So when I approach her car, she jumps out the car. Then she reaches for a taser, so then I close her in the door, and um, once my dad, he, we were outside together, he pulls me off the door. She then takes her car, um, it's a video. She's attempting to run me over with her car. She did manage to run over my foot. I then went in the house. I got a broomstick, like an attachment, like the broom wasn't attached, but I've got the broomstick and I went outside and I started swinging it at her car and I damaged the hood of her car and the window. And then she left? No. She um, stayed at the house. I went back in the house. She called the police, and 
I'm not sure what happened after she called the police. Well, did the police arrive? My dad informed me that we didn't know what she was telling the police, that I, you know, when police come, everybody gets arrested. So he said, I had something to do that day, go get a facial, an appointment at one o'clock. So I just went ahead and headed off to that. So you left? Yes. You knew she called the police and you left? Yes. Leaving your dad to explain to the police what happened? My dad didn't talk to the police neither. So they just came? As far as I know, they just came, knocked on the door when I called to see if there was a report made. The police said no report was made. That was it. Okay, fine. So the damage that was done to your car was done with a broomstick handle? Yes. To her car? Yes. By you? Yes. Now, Miss Gaines, did you have a taser in your car? I don't own a taser. And when you got to the house, your father was standing with her, but he was outside. She was already at the sidewalk when I pulled up. Okay. So he was at the door. By well, the... Why don't you tell me your version of what happened when you pulled up? I pulled up. I was recording um, the incident on my phone. I don't have that recording because it was on Instagram. I didn't want the embarrassment to go on any longer. I tried to screen record it, but it didn't save. Okay, so you don't have video. You don't have that okay. full video. I do have a short video of her actually attacking the, the car with uh, with a stick that she pulled came out of the house with, though. So I do have that I'd portion. like to look at it. I have the full video. Okay, I'd like to see hers, and thank you for telling me you have the full video. Okay. I think the the full video might be more sufficient because I have bits and pieces of the video. Kevin, I'm going to take both. Would you pull up the video that you have on your phone? We're going to go over to my family member's house right now to find out why we want to fight me. She has literally did everything in her possibility to make my dad my enemy. She has moved into his house, told him I'm on drugs. My family have come up with the excuse that I'm on drugs and that's why nobody has come to see me. Yeah, do it. I'm on live. <laughs> First, Miss Gaines, you do understand that you damaged your sister's car. Yes. Okay, and that you have to pay for that. Your Jessica Gaines claims her sister, Joanne Gaines, vandalized her car and harassed her. Joanne is countersuing for an assault and filing a false restraining order against her. Okay, Miss Gaines, you do understand that you damaged your sister's car? Yes. Okay, and that you have to pay for that? She sued me for the damages already. She sued you? Did she get the damages? Yes. Oh. She was granted. Okay. Okay, so you sued her already and you got a judgment. Yes, for that incident. For this damage. But not the damage that would happen on December the 12th. Just a second. Sorry. To this damage that you caused to your sister's car, you had damage to your car. Yes. And tell me what that was. So on three different occasions, she came to my house and popped both of my tires on the driver's side of my car. Okay, and this was after October 30th. Yes. You'd been living at your father's house for three years yes. with your children. During that three year period of time, was your car ever damaged? No. Did you ever have tires popped on the car? No. Did you confront your sister at any time about the damage to your car? No. According to this, you have a video of her near your car yes. on one of those occasions. Yes. I'd like to see it. Before I even look at it, Ms. Gaines, you received a judgment and were compensated for the damage to your car caused by your sister. Mm -hmm. Do you acknowledge that you or someone acting on your behalf flattened her tires? One tire. Okay. So you say you flattened them one time. One tire, one time. And when? Right before November. Okay. And what did you flatten the tires with? Uh, knife. So Just you slashed... One tire. She did say tires, didn't Just she? Just one tire. She said one tire, one time. Okay. And that was in November? Beginning of November. Did you pay for that tire? I did not. And do you have photographs of the flattened tires? Yes. I'd like to take a look at them. How many times were they flattened? My tires were flattened three times. Tires. How many tires the first time? Two. How many tires the second time? Sorry, I just want to make sure. Two. How many tires the third time? Two. And you filed the, a case against your sister for damage to your car on what date? This is you for damages to her car. December 16th. 
and your tires had already been flattened how many times? Three. Do you have a bill for those tires? Uh, yes, well, I had took the receipt before, so I don't have the receipt, but I had the police report where the police- No, I want to see the receipt. I'm sorry. I need damages. You want damages, you have to show me that you spent money to replace the tires and how much they cost. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, when I had went to court when she was suing me for her car, I just took the receipts as proof, and when the judge took it, I never got it back. Did you count to sue her for the tires when no. she sued you? No. Well, why would the judge take your receipts for the tire? Because um, he took all of our evidence at the end of the case. No, 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 no. The only reason a court would take your evidence is if you had a counterclaim for your damage. I'm new to the court thing, so I didn't know to counter sue. So when I, I had to file paperwork, so when I went to court on our court date, I was just letting the judge know, like, look, she did these damages to me. I didn't file a counter sue claim. I didn't know I had to do that. The judge looked at it and didn't return that to you? He said um, any evidence that we wanted to, to be taken into consideration to leave it with him. And I left it with him. And what kind of tires did you purchase? Um, I believe they say Bridgestone on them. And what's the name, make and model of your car? It's a 2005 Cadillac Escalade. Can you get me any information about that, Sarah? Cost of cars, 2000 Escalade, what kind of tires it uses. Okay, so the harassment that you're talking about by your sister, because that's the other part of your claim, the vandalism is one which Sarah is looking up now. The damages for harassment were the tires being slashed, is that right? A part of it, yes. Well, what's the other part? Well, when I filed for the restraining order, the judge said it sounded like a family matter, so I didn't. So the judge, the court dismissed it? Yes. So on December 24th, which was Christmas Eve, I woke up and my tires were popped again. So I then asked my dad, is it okay if I record you reaching out to my sister, asking her to leave me alone so that if I do go to court again, I have some evidence? Because again, my dad didn't come to court and I can't afford to be down in the morning. Okay. And then I was just like, okay, well, at that point, I didn't feel safe there no more because she had already called children's services on me. And then every two weeks, my tires were being popped. Okay. I really couldn't afford okay. it. I got it. Do you recall how much you spent for each tire? Each tire was $120. So you spent a little over $700? Yes. Okay. That, that's about right from what I'm seeing. Okay. So, Ms. Gaines, let me tell you how I'm going to rule on her request for damages for her car. But I believe that some things make sense and some things don't. And if somebody has an M.O., of slashing tires as their reaction to having their car damaged. And if you acknowledge doing it and doing it one time, it is not a giant leap from my imagination that you cause the same damage to all six of her tires. I don't find that a giant leap. I think the whole thing is foolish and I actually don't see the basis for coming out with a broomstick except that you were angry and lashing out at her car. You could have stayed in your house and called the police. There was no reason for you to come out of the house at all except to confront your sister. You had an application for a restraining order against your sister? This is correct. And you had a trial on that? This is correct. And you were granted a restraining order? Yes. For how long? Uh, six months. And that expired? Uh, it hasn't expired yet. Yep. This was an incident. It was caused by her coming to my house after court okay. and causing more damage. Okay. So I think that she had the right to file for a restraining order against you because part of your action is filing false restraining order. Part of your case was for vandalism to your car. Jessica Gaines accuses her sister, Joanne Gaines, of slashing her tires. Joanne claims she needed to file a restraining order against Jessica. Okay, let's get to the assault part of your claim that I would like to hear. First, I watched the video, and I have to tell you, Ms. Gaines, that in my judgment, what you took a big whiff of was a blunt. Is that what they call that? That is. Okay, and that's what was in the video, and that's what? while you were on your way over there and very, very angry and driving a car and lost in a sea of smoke, do you understand? And I think that that's both foolish, bad judgment, dangerous, and dangerous to drive a car that way. I agree, I'm sorry. And shows an absolute lack of judgment. So I would think about that kind of behavior again. If I, you wanna tell me 
when and under what circumstances your sister assaulted you and where you were hospitalized or treated medically? When I pulled up to the house, she had asked me to jump out of the vehicle. I was... How did she ask you to jump out of the vehicle? She was standing on the sidewalk. I was putting the car in park and she had, she stated, uh, hop out, uh, and um, I said, okay, I guess well, we're hopping out. Well, that was sort of silly. If somebody said to you, hop out, I would stay in the car. I'm trying to talk to my dad. I have a... Okay. I, well, you talk to your dad later when things have calmed down and you're not high on weed. I understand that you... <sighs> you so got the damages for your car by way of a judgment. I've awarded you for the tires $726. $726 for the tires. That's the judgment of the court. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I only slashed her tires one time, one tire, like I stated. It was fair. There's no receipts that were presented, so they were never damaged. We got it, you know, we got the proof, so. She stated that I ran over by the car, but she was walking back into her house. How are you walking if your foot got ran over by a car? It's embarrassing. Jealousy, maybe I don't feel that way. This is my younger sister. I love my younger sister. I don't wish that this wasn't even. So we're siblings. So siblings go through stuff. So, my Sarah, the case to me you know, we've seen it before, siblings fighting, un very unfortunate. So I'm going to ask you a question, because right. I know I come from a separate generation, three down from you. Okay. And I've already accepted the fact that many states in this country have voted in favor of legislation which suggests that marijuana is a legal substance and decriminalizing it. Fine. Just like alcohol. Yes. That's what my grandchildren tell me. <laughs> you drink alcohol we do something else. But am I crazy? Because I watched that video, and to me that was the most interesting part of the video. <laughs> and then she took this big cigar mm -hmm. thing, which I found out what those were called back in my family court days. <laughs> and I, it's interesting that I could recall it called a blunt. Tell me what you think. Would it be no different if she took a big bottle of vodka from the passenger seat mm -hmm and took a couple of swigs before she got to a fight. Yeah. Okay, I want your take on that. Yeah, even as a different generation, there's responsibilities and regulations and rules, the same with alcohol. So while it might be legalized, decriminalized in many states, you still have to follow the rules and act responsibly. I think there are different physiological would you, effects. Would you say that there was any jurisdiction in this country where you could smoke marijuana while you were driving. I think it's still considered under the influence, which is just as bad as driving under the influence of alcohol. So I think it impairs your judgment all the same. And showing up to a fight high, I think, is equivalent to showing up drunk. And Even if you were going to a party. Yeah. You're behind the wheel of tons of weight and something that could be used as a deadly weapon. Yeah. So you got to yeah. be as sharp I, as you can. Yeah. Just from this interaction, you're absolutely right legally. But I'm not getting Xin chào mọi người, chào mừng mọi người đã quay trở lại với kết của mình Và chúng ta sẽ lại cùng nhau tô màu nha Và đây sẽ là bức tranh của ngày hôm nay Đây, các bạn hãy cùng mình bắt tay vào và tô màu thật đẹp cho bức tranh này nhé Trước tiên thì chúng mình sẽ cùng tô màu cho đôi môi nha mọi người Rồi thì cùng nhau tô điểm phần mái tóc nhé Mình sẽ lựa chọn màu vàng Và mình sẽ tô bên còn lại nhé Mái tóc khá là đẹp Và 
cái mái tóc của mình đã được hoàn thành rồi giờ chúng mình sẽ tô cho chiếc vùng khổ cổ khá là cá tính này nhé mình sẽ sử dụng màu xanh lá để tô mình sẽ tô 